Emotional Intelligence 2.0, Catherine Deschatels. Introduction. Congratulations on purchasing Emotional Intelligence 2.0, and I want to thank you. There are thousands of books on emotional intelligence, so I appreciate the fact that you chose this one. I made sure to make every effort to ensure that it has as much useful information as possible, so please enjoy it. You should also be in full acceptance of yourself, who you are, and what you plan to do with your life. Being self-aware and having the ability to accept things just as they are is a great sign that you are on the right track. Being self-aware and mindful is a good example of someone who displays emotional intelligence, which says that they have the ability to control the reactions they have to their emotions. Taking the time to try and improve your emotional skills will also improve your personal and your professional life as well. When you are looking to make a relationship stronger, improve communication, and restore trust, having these tools will be a great help to you. Among other topics, we will be discussing the four skills which are needed in order to have emotional intelligence, self-management, when you have the ability to control impulses, urges, and other negative behaviors. Self-awareness, being mindful of your emotions and having the ability to control reactions and responses. Social awareness, having the ability to read the body language of others, as well as being able to interact with people without feeling socially awkward. Relationship management, this means that you have the ability to pull out the best in everyone else around you. It is about you being able to inspire, motivate, and influence them, as well as making sure to build important bonds. An emotionally intelligent individual is highly conscious of their own emotions, negativity, frustration, sadness, and has the ability to identify and manage them. These types of people can easily sense the emotions that others experience because they are so tuned into their own. When you show sensitivity to the emotions of others, both from within yourself and from your actual social environment, this can help you to become a better friend, leader, or mate to your romantic partner. Definition of Emotional Intelligence When you have emotional intelligence, it ensures you have the ability to be aware of, control, and express your emotions, being able to understand and evaluate the behaviors of others. When you have a true understanding of yourself, you increase your ability to deal with and understand other people, you become emotionally mature. This means that you will have the ability to laugh at yourself and all of the mistakes or bad decisions that you have made in life and to help you analyze how you are perceived by others. Self-regulation is when you are able to manage those urges, impulses, and thinking before you react to a situation. You should be mature enough to take responsibility for your actions and decisions and having an open mind when it comes to changes. You should also be able to come to the conclusion that just because someone is yelling at you, this does not mean that it is you they are upset with. It could be the circumstance that they may be in when you are emotionally mature. It can help you to understand this. Being motivated to become a better person in life is a good sign that someone has emotional intelligence because they are focused on self-improvement instead of material things. It can also assist you in becoming more productive in your personal and working relationships because you will have a better understanding of how to control your emotions. You will also become a better leader, student, team player thinker, and winner. You will find yourself taking time to think deliberately about everything that you say, the actions that you take, and as a result, you will be more mindful and will make a thought out decision. Basically, emotional intelligence is the ability to use your own emotional knowledge about yourself and others to make healthy choices. In addition, an emotionally intelligent person will always welcome the pessimism of others because it gives them the inspiration to crush those doubts and inspire someone else. Why it matters more than IQ, IQ, 
which is largely genetic and barely changes from childhood, is measured from a standardized test, which determines how smart you are, identify high levels of intelligence, and determine if there is any mental illness present. Emotional intelligence, with much patience, practice, and dedication, can be learned at any age. You can focus on the one skill that you need to most, and once you master that one, you can move on to the next one. The bottom line is, having emotional intelligence is far more important than having a high IQ, which cannot help you achieve better connections with other human beings. Your IQ will show your intelligence level, but if you have no creativity, goals, determination, and social skills, you will not be able to succeed in life. Having the ability to use your self-awareness in order to be more understanding of others as well as their emotions is a greater skill to have. Living on this earth as a human being, we will have to have some interaction with other people at some point in our lives. Emotional intelligence will also assist you in getting over mishaps, setbacks, and dealing with some of the bad decisions made while living life. It is a great idea to have friends, family, and co-workers that you have built as a support system for yourself. This way you can turn to them when you are feeling down. A huge part of being able to get through life and dealing with the many things that life throws our way is making sure that we have people that we love and trust around us during our journey through life. The bottom line is that having a high IQ has nothing to do with you being able to exist, communicate, and interact with others which requires the ability to be self-aware, show compassion, understanding, and kindness when people are going through tough times. Your IQ will not teach you how to love, understand, help, or show empathy to another human being, but having emotional intelligence will carry you much further in life. As we know, many of those individuals who have high IQ levels are never the happiest or the most fulfilled in their lives, they are usually mean and miserable. Not to mention, we all have met someone who is extremely book smart but has no common sense at all, can barely survive in the real world, which is actually a sad sight to see. Common sense versus book smart. I have been in the company of some very intelligent people who did not have an inch of common sense and they cannot recognize when it is time to work with others, and many times they do not even know how to change a light bulb. It is very interesting to interact with someone who can recite the Declaration of Independence or recall a book report from years ago, but cannot tell you what it takes to make a baby stop crying. People who are extremely book smart are really far from what I like to call human reality. They are so caught up in the fact that they are intelligent that they never take the time to become better humans because most of them feel superior to others. Why Emotional Intelligence is Important If you are walking around without the components of emotional intelligence, some would say that you are similar to a zombie because you are not connected to any feelings at all. Personally, I like to call them robots. I am sure that we all have been around someone who seems to have no human feelings at all just cold as an ice block or metal as a robot. It is very easy to tell someone who has no emotional intelligence. Most of them are controlling, narcissistic, and very easy to spot. The individuals that they usually keep company with are people with no goals or drive, low self-esteem, and people who depend on them for something. This is because they know that these are the type of people who will allow themselves to consistently mistreated and disrespected. These abusive personality types have no idea or interest in how to treat people with respect. They are only focused on their constant need to feed their ego. When you work with someone who is empathetic, confident, and self-aware, things can be absolutely amazing. The way that they will support those around them, embrace the ideas of others, and actually care about people in the world shows through the things that they do in life. Basically, being a good person, knowing who you are, 
Having the ability to communicate with others and being a caring individual is more effective than having a high IQ. Change your life with emotional intelligence. If you are not engaged in healthy relationships with those that you love, if you are the person that no one wants to be around at work, if you are the one who people call if they have to, then you might want to consider doing a self-evaluation. Many times, we go through life just trying to make it. A lot of people did not have anyone to guide them or give them directions on how to manage basic things in everyday life. There may come a time when there is something or someone to wake us up and remind us that we are going down the wrong road. This is a blessing from God because He knows that all people on earth did not come from loving families, so He will send you family members who will love you and be there for you in His name. You just need to be open to them when they arrive. Sometimes we may not be aware of the way that we come off, how our character and personality are perceived, which can have negative results if the behavior never changes. If you have a desire to become a better person, to be able to have peace in your life, to improve your relationships, or just to get better at interacting and communicating with others, this is a good thing. Emotional intelligence can definitely have an effect on the way that you perform at school or work when you have a high level. You will be able to better navigate through life on a personal basis. You will excel socially as well as in the workplace simply because you are now aware of how to process emotions. Many great leaders and truly successful people are emotionally mature and in touch with their power. This is why they are so confident and have the ability to inspire and motivate others to achieve greatness in their lives. Know your power. Many of us do not realize how much power there is in self-talk because we usually tap into it for the wrong reasons, like those times when we limit ourselves or use up time talking ourselves out of trying something new. You should get into the habit of using this to replace all negative thoughts with positive ones. It also can be used to visualize yourself with all of the things that you aspire to have in life. Imagine that you have a friend over your house. They constantly judge you, criticize you, and the way that you live your life. Now, take a moment to imagine this person has an annoying sounding voice on top of all of the negative energy. Think about how long it would take for you to get kicked them out of your house and possibly out of your life. It probably would not take too long. As soon as you reach your limit, that person is going to be gone quickly because you have finally had enough of them. Now, imagine that you are that annoying person with that crazy voice. You need to be strong enough to take the same type of action, which is kicking that voice out of your head. You are now going to make an effort to replace that negative voice with something more positive and permanent because the outcome and results you end up having are going to be a result of the choices that you are making now. Use what you see. There is always the option of mirroring or trying to copy the work ethic of other successful people. You can also consistently work on a new skill mentally and physically until it becomes natural for you. As young children, we would always try to emulate our parents and we automatically tried to act in the same way we saw them behave. When you make a choice to copy or model the movements of someone who is extremely confident, eventually your mindset will be of the same confidence level, which is a direct result of your mind and your body is eternally linked together. You can begin to operate your body in the same manner as the person you are trying to copy and eventually your mind will begin to think in the same type of way that they do. The most important thing to remember here is repetition. When you consistently do the same thing over and again, day after day, week after week, eventually it will become automatic for you. Self-awareness. You should take the time to self-reflect so that you can get really clear about how your emotions affect you and how much control you have over the reactions and responses to things that may upset you. 
Being mindful about how you will respond when certain emotions manifest within you will help you when you are interacting with other people will cause you to keep yourself out of certain situations. It is all about knowing how you will react to specific people or situations which can only benefit you in the future. Come up with a list of five ways that you react when you are emotionally challenged and what it is that you do to keep control of yourself in those moments. You may take a moment to gather yourself, you may want to go and eat, or you might want to remove yourself from the situation for a moment. The point is to know exactly how things affect you, what it is that triggers negative reactions from you, and how you can manage that. One of the best things you can do to help yourself calm down is to be mindful of your breathing. Making sure to take deep abdominal breaths are the best way to go. You also need to recognize that others are mirrors for yourself. Be mindful of the role that you play in any reaction you have to another person if you find someone irritating and try to figure out what it is about you that is finding them irritating. You and your personality have a role in every perception you have about other people as well as the challenges that are going on inside of you. You may be contributing without knowing. This does not mean that this person is not annoying or irritating. It just means that you need to take a closer look at yourself. Many times your perception of someone will add unnecessary thoughts or ideas to the situation. If you suddenly feel like there is something that does not feel authentic, it is most likely because you are picking up on their subtle nonverbal cues which are inconsistent with what they are saying. When you pay close attention to someone while they are talking, you can actually feel when they are being dishonest by paying attention to your own emotional reactions to them. People can really say good things and try to convince you that they are genuine, but you can sometimes feel when something is not right, so you should always listen to and trust your good feeling. Once again, evaluate your role and how you are looking at them they might remind you of your father, who may not have been the best person to you. If this is the case, you might judge this person based on things that your father does or have done in the past, so you need to be mindful of your perception and why you see them the way that you do. Improving Emotional Intelligence Nurturing yourself needs to happen on a consistent basis so that you will continue to believe that you are loving and capable of giving love to others as well. This also involves being mindful enough to realize when to give you love and to make sure that it is only to those who deserve it. Even when you go back and forth in your mind about feeling like you are not good enough, embrace the fact that you are uncomfortable, allow yourself to feel that, and try to control the way that you react. It is all about having the ability to be honest about the feelings that you may be having, then you can focus on how to change your actions to be more pleasing and positive. Use your imagination to get rid of people in your mind, your memory, or even out of your face temporarily until you can get away from them in reality. There are several ways that you can make sure that you are going to be okay in every situation that you find yourself getting into. It is all about using the power of choice, choosing to look at things in a different way. This can have any kind of special effects that you want. You can make any changes that you want. You can create only the type of voices that you want to hear and characters that you want to see. If you know someone who has been mean or disrespectful towards you, they can automatically be turned into a puff smoke that disappears. This will work well when you have to work with difficult people. It is a fun way to take your mind away from them and the environment in order to get through your day. You have to make sure that you are okay at all times and working in a stressful environment Call cause you to have serious health issues if you are forced to continue work under the same conditions. You should really take a moment so that you can truly be aware of how this can help you. It offers major assistance with learning how to control and master all of your reactions and responses. Take advantage of those positive emotions when they are present and use them to think of things just the way you want it to be, believe in that, be patient and wait for things to happen naturally.
make sure to be aware of exactly what the situation is so that you can make the best choice on how to deal with things going forward while managing to keep a positive attitude this will help make you get the outcome that you want and have planned for you always want to seek help and support from your friends and family in a way that you never have before this is more as vital than people want to admit when you feel secure knowing that you have that person or people that you can count on, it can decrease stress. This is the time that we need to cherish, nurture, build, and hold on to those important relationships that we have in our lives. This is what is important in our last days. Just keep in mind that there are thousands of lonely human beings walking on this planet with no one to love them, no one to hold them, no one to tell them that they are loved, so do not take these things for granted. Another huge part of self-care is taking the time to show yourself some extra love, reward and compliment yourself when you accomplish a goal or when you do something really great, this does wonder for your self-esteem and your confidence. When you make it a point to admire, respect, and approve of yourself, it builds up your self-worth and adds to the positive thoughts that you will have. You are actually feeding your spirit with the proper nutrition with each positive statement and thought about yourself. Self-esteem and self-confidence High self-esteem is very important to your emotional health because the way you think about yourself can have an effect on the way that you do business and the way that you interact with others. You need to like and respect yourself so that this is projected when you are in the presence of other people the more love you have for yourself and the things that you are doing, the more confident you will be. One of the first steps to achieving high self-esteem is to dig down deep and get to know who you really are, your real dreams and desires, your likes and dislikes. This will help to make sure that you are living your truth. When you have a genuine love for yourself, the better you are going to be at the things that you are working on because you will be doing them with so much pride, which will enhance your confidence even more. Self-control and self-discipline self-control can be attained and mastered. You just have to want it and be determined that nothing is going to stop you from working hard to get yourself on point. This can take plenty of hard work, especially if you have a history of living out of control, giving in to all of your urges and temptations, and have no self-management. It is going to take consistent focusing on your mental strength and work on building it up, which will assist you when it is time to fight some of those urges. You will have to make some tough decisions that involve removing certain habits, creating new goals. This is vital to achieving self-discipline. It will take skillful planning, strategic thinking, and possibly a checklist which will ensure that you are staying on track and doing the things that you are supposed to do. Changing the way that you currently live, which is on the wild side, will have a very positive effect on your life because you will have less stress, healthier relationships, and a more peaceful presence. The next time you are tempted to go and spend money that you know you need to be saving, just remind yourself of what you are taking away from the future that you have planned. This may not work at first, but if you are consistent with doing this, it will serve as another tool to assist you in becoming more self-disciplined. When you are faced with having to deal with difficult situations, circumstances, and people, this can be another effective tool to use because it is a way of testing your level of self-control. You will get better at dealing with having to interact with certain people when you too especially when you are dealing with the individuals that challenge you the most by being difficult or annoying. Knowing your values when you live your life by prioritizing what is most important to you, then you will not have to think twice when you face a moral or ethical decision. You will choose right. Make a point to always stay in on your values. Do not back down for anyone, including yourself. We all know that person in the mirror can be the one to cause us the most setbacks, so just remember to check yourself when you need to in order to stay on track. Make sure that others respect the boundaries and limits that you have set, 
and remember to stay consistent so that they will understand that you mean business. Being authentic. Authenticity is not about showing and sharing everything about yourself. It is all about embracing exactly who you are and standing on that. Be you. God only created one of you, so be that the fullest extent and show your stuff. This also means being completely honest, being who you really are no matter who is around. Do not change or alter your personality to please or impress anyone else. Make it a point to say what you mean and mean what you say, while sticking to your values, principles, and still being available to others. Many people will be turned off or intimidated by your authenticity, but that is their insecurities to deal with, not yours. Just stay focused on who you are and how you carry yourself. No more isolation. A huge cause for stress involves not having emotional support and people who love you in your corner that you know you can trust. When you make it a habit of isolating yourself from others because you prefer being alone, this can be dangerous. As you are already feeling stressed, it will add more negative emotions. When dealing with high levels of stress, placing yourself into isolation can actually increase the negative emotions and feelings that you are experiencing. If you are an individual who does not have a lot of close friends, you should start getting out and make it a habit to meet and interact with new people on a regular basis. Do not allow past experiences with so-called friends to keep you from being open to making new friends. There are many people in the world and they are not all bad. You should always have the courage to love again, trust again, and try to live actively because that is what life is all about. The experiences that you will have are going to create memories, both good and bad, that will last for a lifetime. The more time that you spend alone, the higher the chance that you will place yourself in danger of becoming even more stressed, more depressed, and finally, dependent on isolation instead of being with other people. If you consistently allow yourself to be detached from the world, it is going to become normal to you, so you will not even notice that you are actually trapped in that isolated existence. This is unhealthy because you can fall into a cycle of isolation, and the longer that you stay there, the harder it will be to get out. You will eventually become what you believe, so the more you believe you cannot change your ways or get out of that situation, then the longer you will stay in that environment. If you continue to convince yourself that no one is able to help you, the more you will believe that, and you will always try to convince other people of that as well. Believe it or not, you can become codependent on negativity, guilt, and anger, which all will eventually breed shame because you have convinced yourself that you are not able to cope with the world on your own. It can become an addiction, the same way that people get stuck in abusive or toxic relationships, and they can never seem to get themselves out of the situation. This will usually cause them to develop a sick sense of excitement, and they begin to attach abuse and neglect to feeling excited. You do not want to develop the habit of attaching yourself to things that are unhealthy, including people, habits, and relationships, because this behavior can be difficult to stop. Now that you have begun to feel more comfortable getting out into the world and interacting with strangers on a more frequent level, be sure that you do not fall back into the habit of solitude. This can be easy to do because you may think that you have accomplished a huge step by meeting quite a few people, which can cause you to feel that you do not need to go out as often. You do not want this to happen because out of old habit, you will start to isolate yourself all over again because this is where you have been comfortable in the past. It is okay to spend time alone as long as you have the correct perspective on solitude, using it only to discover an inward quietness or self-awareness, not to find comfort, stability, and fulfillment. During those quiet moments, this is when you will probably get the clarity and get answers that you have been asking for in your heart and spirit. Human Interaction You should have as much interaction with people as you possibly can, 
especially if you have been isolating yourself from others, make it a point to start going out on a regular basis. Avoid those negative thoughts that have you believing that all of your experiences with new people are going to be bad or filled with drama. The more you get out of the house and interact with other people, the more you will encounter different types of individuals which should encourage you not to isolate yourself from the world. Engaging in face-to-face -face communication with others will activate certain hormones that relieve stress and help you to feel calm and safe. When you are experiencing negative emotions, having a quick, simple chat with someone can get your mind off of things as well as help you to relax. Keeping strong and healthy relationships is vital to living a productive, effective, healthy, and peaceful lifestyle, so continue to seek out new positive connections. When you finally take the time to truly interact with other people, you will begin to see just how lonely you really were. You got so used to that feeling that it became natural to you. It is good for the spirit to spend time with those that love and care for you because everyone needs to feel as if they have that loving, trusting support system. Social Skills In order to enhance your social skills, you are going to need to work on your communication skills, your interaction with others, and getting yourself out of that comfort zone. Make it part of your schedule so that you are spending at least an hour per week in some type of social setting where you can interact and communicate with strangers. If you do not have a place that you prefer, karaoke is a great way to meet other people who are just letting loose and having a good time without any judgment. Going to enjoy the free jazz concerts in the park, which almost every city has during the summer, this is also a good way to meet and connect with others. Your social intelligence. When you are in tune with your emotions, this can serve a huge purpose on the social level which will ensure that you are consistently connecting with other people and the world. This will also ensure that you have the ability to tell the difference between someone being real and someone who is faking. You will also be able to tell if someone is really interested in you. When you have an actual conflict with someone, it can serve as an opportunity to get to know that person on a different level. If you learn to pay attention to everything, this will also allow you to possibly grow closer to them than you were before. Having disagreements are just a natural part of being a human being and having to interact with other people, individuals will always have different opinions. Being socially aware enables you to recognize and interpret the nonverbal cues that people are constantly using to communicate with you. It will help you to read how others are really feeling. It will also enable you to recognize when their emotional state changes from situation to situation, which will help you to establish somewhat of a baseline for them. When you are able to have a baseline on someone, this will make analyzing them easier for you to do, because now you are aware of some of their consistent body language. Learning to consistently follow the flow of the emotional responses of someone else consists of the idea reciprocation which requires that you also pay attention to the changes in your own emotional reactions. When you are consistent in paying attention to others, this does not take away from your own self-awareness, it actually builds it up tremendously. When you take that time to put that extra effort into really paying attention and being mindful of others, you will begin to gain deeper insight into your own emotional mindset and your values and beliefs. Take this into consideration if you are always uncomfortable hearing others express certain views or how they feel, then you have now learned something important about yourself. This is something that you can use as a weapon in the future, whether is it to protect yourself or if it is to help you accurately read the nonverbal communication of others. Emotionally Protected You make sure to protect your emotions. You will not allow anyone to manipulate you in any way because by being self-aware, mindful of how others use others for personal gain. Being emotionally intelligent will ensure that this type of mental manipulation will not work on you. You will see it coming and send signals not to even try it with you. 
This is a great skill to have because sometimes we can be so open when we meet new people, especially when falling in love. You have to know how to see when someone is trying to be deceitful. Even when it is something small, do not let it pass. File it in your mental Rolodex and make a note. This is going to serve as a huge factor in determining the character of this person. You may not actually let them know that you are aware of them trying to play with your mind because this is a good way to gain more information and really see how far they are planning to go with trying to manipulate you. Some people may want to sit back, watch and let the person think that they are getting away with this, while others may take the opposite approach and tell them immediately that they are not falling for the games. The key is to be self-aware and mindful so that you can be on the lookout for those horrible individuals who look for people that they can manipulate. Sometimes, these people are the ones who are closest to us. When you are emotionally strong enough to protect yourself from your family members and closest friends without coming off disrespectful but very stern, this is when you have arrived. Meeting new people. You will need to get out. Make it a point to start practicing being social, engaging in conversations with people even when it makes you uncomfortable because this is what will help you over time, believe it or not. That feeling of discomfort will push you to want to feel the opposite, so you will find yourself working quickly to develop those skills quickly so that you do not feel that way anymore. You can also attend social skill support groups. This is another option that is out there for those who may shy away from social settings or are just afraid to talk to strangers. This will definitely help you if you are having a difficult time communicating. They are great at providing support for those who are shy, feel awkward around others. They have activities and exercises that will help you not to feel so anxious or nervous in social situations, as well as assist you in working on your new skills. One of the best ways to improve social skills is to start talking to anyone that you get a chance to talk to, be open to making new friends, and you will probably find someone who understands your difficulties and struggles. Make sure that you give yourself at least an hour so that you can an honest effort to initiate a conversation with as many strangers possible. You do not have to like or be attracted to any of these people. The idea is to get yourself comfortable approaching strangers and striking up a random conversation. When you engage people who you do not know, this is a very effective communication tool because it forces you to open up and use your curiosity to ask questions and learn things that you do not know. It will also improve your listening skills because the fact is that we tend to pay more attention to people we do not know while they are talking because we are trying to get facts about them. Improving communication skills if you do not have a good history of being comfortable communicating with anyone that you come into contact with, then we can fix that right now. You just need to start multiple random conversations with strangers throughout the day. This will build your conversational skills as well as your confidence. Consistent conversations and interactions with others will help you to become more effective in your communication skills. Be sure to remember important details when talking with someone. It will show that you are actually listening and paying attention to them as they speak. They will gain more respect for you because people can tell if someone is genuinely listening to them when they talk. Making and keeping eye contact, asking questions, and repeating facts back to them is also very vital. It shows that you are an active participant. Try to be mindful of your body language because it will be telling a story itself and will play a major role in the listening process. There is only one of you. Also, be careful not to get into the habit of comparing your progress with someone else and where they may be in their journey. This will damage the whole process of changing the way you think and living an effective lifestyle, so be self-aware, confident, and proud of who you are. If you have not yet found your purpose or may not be sure of what you want in life, take the time to figure it out. It is okay to use the work ethic of another individual as a blueprint to success. 
Just be careful not to judge yourself or assess your goals based on their accomplishments. Energy Making sure that your energy is in the right place is essential to living a peaceful life as well as ensuring that you have good health. A good way to get your energy in a good place is to take a moment to relax, reflect, and breathe deeply. When we are mindful and protect our emotional energy, we are able to live a healthier and more effective lifestyle. Emotions are valuable and can be very beneficial to us, and once we learn to process and cope with them correctly and effectively, this is when we begin to know who we really are on the inside. When you take the time to focus on your energy, this can benefit you in many ways because will not allow anything negative to enter into your space. Embrace new things. Change begins with awareness and acceptance, as well as making sure to be assertive in your actions. Sometimes that means doing things in ways that you are not used to, so you are going to have to be honest with yourself and get ready for commitment. Determination, keeping an open mind, and be willing to try different things will automatically begin to change a thing about you. Pick one behavior you want to change and work on it constantly until you are comfortable with it. Next, choose another chance to work on and just keep repeating it over and over until you are into making a habit of embracing change. If you are looking for a change in someone, try to be an example of that change. Instead of trying to change them, this is usually not successful at all. When others see that you are making an effort to change, they will be more likely to be open to changing as well. If we change ourselves, the tendencies around us would also change along with the attitude of those around you. If you change how you think, then that will affect how you feel and what actions you take. Do not fear the unknown, embrace change, invite new ideas into your world, take a chance in life, that door that you are afraid to walk through may have your dreams on the other side. Lose your routines, do not allow yourself to go through life doing the same thing day after day, year after year. Be that person who can say that they took chances in life and made a habit to try new things. Get out of your routine of the way that you normally do things every day. You should even make a few changes to the way that you live your life, pick one day, and change up everything that you would usually. Get out of your comfort zone, break the mold, and crack the code, force yourself to do something that makes you uneasy. This will build character strength, self-worth, confidence, and courage. Anything that will take you away from feeling completely comfortable and make yourself try something new, this will help you to build courage as well as confidence. You can make it a point to do something different during your lunch break at work or even going out and getting a new haircut one that you have never tried before. This will help you to become more open, welcome, and embrace change and you will be excited about new challenges. Now that you have forced yourself to experience different things, you should be more open to changes and embrace challenges in your life. You will begin to look forward to trying new things and possibilities because now you welcome the opportunity to challenge yourself. Make an immediate decision to try something different. It does not have to be too drastic. It can be small. Just make sure that you complete whatever it is. Do not be afraid to live outside of the box or break the mold, crush the normal, and always search for a deeper truth and an alternative answer to what you are looking into. Take pride in making new moves, being self-educated, do your research, so that you can find what best fits you and your lifestyle. Lose bad habits and get healthy ones begin with new smaller habits. While you are trying to change and become a more disciplined person, you are going to need to take on a new set of habits which will encourage you to behave in a way that is conducive to your future and well-being. Depending on your level of self-discipline, you may need to start very slowly because if you try to force something onto yourself too quickly, you will only reject it and go right back to those old habits. If you are trying to start working out, you can begin with something really small, 
like waking up and doing morning stretches just to get your mind used to doing some kind of activity every morning, this is a great start. Next, you can begin to take daily walks and eventually incorporate more water into your diet until you are actually drinking at least one glass of water every day. These are going to be very small steps that you can take without too much effort and will not cause too much fear or anxiety. If you are trying to lose weight, you should take time to focus on healthier habits, make sure to educate yourself, incorporate water into your diet immediately, and start taking walks. This will get you started quickly, but will also ensure that you are not trying to do too much in the beginning, give yourself permission to take it slow. Just make sure that you are committed so that you can add new things each week to ensure an effective outcome in your weight loss journey. Take 5 seconds. Whenever you get something in your mind and spirit, you should always try to make a physical move or action within the first 5 seconds without even thinking about it. Taking up too much time to think about whether you are going to do it or not will only end up with you coming up with a way to talk yourself out of doing what needs to be done, which will also result in making excuses. If you just do it without thinking about it, then you do not have the time to talk yourself out of anything and you will be able to focus on getting it done. Take things tough or annoying. When you are trying to stop a bad or unhealthy habit, there are many small things that you can do to assist yourself in this journey. You can add something horrible or uncomfortable to your habit, which may cause a delay or result in you having a change of mind. It is an effective way to deter yourself from doing something that you are trying not to do. It can also serve as an extra incentive to stop the habit that is not any good for you. A good example is a person who cannot stop biting their nails. They can use a substance with a horrible taste and smell to coat their nails with, and this will usually deter them from doing it. They do not want to taste or smell that disgusting substance, so that will help to keep them from biting their nails as much as usual. You could be an individual who wants to quit smoking, take the pack of cigarettes and bury them in the backyard. This way, when you want one, you will actually have to dig up the pack for it. Many times, this will discourage you because you are not going to want to go and dig up a hole in the yard, just go have a smoke. This is just one small tactic that could assist you in your journey to quit smoking. There are also many others that you can use along with this method. Make it easy. Make every attempt possible to assist yourself in whatever you are working on or trying to accomplish, keeping important objects or items close by so that when you need them, they are already in a convenient location. This way, you do not have to think about it, use any extra energy to go and get it because it is right there for you already. This tactic works great when you are beginning new because you will always be ready to take action thanks to the visual aid that you made sure to keep close by. If you are making an effort to start drinking more water, keeping a bottle of water everywhere that you go will help you tremendously because it is already right there when it is time for you to drink it. There will never be a need for you to go and buy water or pour it in a glass because you already have a bottle right next to you which is a perfect example of making the transition more convenient for you. Keep a bottle of water at your desk at work, on your nightstand for when you wake up in the morning, and keep one in your gym bag, so it is there when you finish working out. Wherever you are going to be or planning to be, there should be a bottle of water nearby as well. This is going to assist you in getting better at drinking water, even if you are not a fan of it. Now we can discuss reading more books. Using the same tactic works really well for this, because if you are sitting and waiting somewhere, and you have a book with you, you will pick it up and read some of it. Make it a point to keep a book at your desk. This way, when you have a few moments, you can read a few paragraphs in your book, and it will start to become a habit. Eventually, you will look forward to reading, 
instead of having to come up with ways that you to make yourself want to read anything at all. If you always keep one nearby you, there will not be a need to think about trying to buy one or check one out at the library. When you operate in this manner, you will be able to pull out your book any time that you have spare time. This is a good habit to get into. It serves as an alternative to many other things that we do with our breaks. Journaling Life is like a big puzzle, and we get tips, hints, messages, and answers from all types of sources, and dreams happen to be one of them. Take the time to pay attention to your dreams, document them, and you will start to see answers and clues in them. It might be a little strange at first, especially if you are not into writing things down, but you will begin to feel comfortable doing it quicker than you think. This may end up being something that you feel like you want to do on a consistent basis, as many people who have never written in a journal end up being addicted to it after just a few days. It is a process, and there is nothing like the feeling of freedom that you get when you write down how you feel about something. This is a very good habit to develop. I believe you should journal about everything. I am a huge fan of writing things down due to the releasing process. It will also help you get from the habit of taking time to care for yourself, even if it just means taking a few minutes each day to do something small or silly for yourself. Do it. Many people are not aware that writing in a journal will help you improve your self-awareness, self-confidence as well as relieve stress because writing them down releases them from heart, mind, and spirit. You are actually taking a step towards freeing yourself of whatever burdens or worries that you may have. One of the things that I have noticed about writing things down is that you feel a sense of accomplishment. It always seems as if you have done something important. Not to mention, you look forward to that feeling of freedom, so you will most likely return and write more things down. This is a very good way to clear your mind as well as setting goals and making plans, writing things down makes them a visual aid and you will be more motivated to complete something when you have to look at it daily. Power of Belief Positive thinking can most definitely assist with the healing process and as long as you are mindful of the power within you to believe anything is possible, this is a very good start. It is also a great way to prepare your body for the journey of healing possibly after a very serious surgery or illness. If you make it a practice to try to eat a more balanced and healthy diet, begin some form of meditation, you can develop a positive mindset that will help you navigate through life. Our minds and our bodies already work together as an all-star team even during those times when we are not aware of it, so why not add more positivity to that? This connection with the mind and body is going to happen, whether we participate or not, so keep inserting plenty of positive affirmations, new perspectives, and new beliefs. Think of it like you are getting ready to build your family a brand new house. You paint, you put in new floors, new carpet, new walls, and then brand new ceilings. It is the same idea with your mind, body, and spirit. You can consistently add new positive, bright, important, and motivating messages to it daily. Your mind and body are going to believe all of those wonderful, positive, and beautiful things that you have been feeding it, so now your body is speaking a more positive language without you even realizing it. People will begin to ask why you are glowing or assuming that you have a new love or a new job because the joy will be all over you and your energy has changed. The same way that we can do ourselves harm with the way that we live and eat can also do our body some extremely good, which can create positive outcomes towards our steps in healing. With the power of your mind, you are able to convince your body that it has the ability to prevent and heal illness and diseases. The next step is that you actually believe in what you are telling your body. The power of belief is very real. By being and thinking positive, you can create the outcome that you actually want. The last thing that you want to do is 
to sit and wait for someone or something to come and give you an opportunity, you must have the type of mindset that will go out and create opportunities for yourself. Eventually, all of those things that you have thought about will start to come to pass and become a reality as long as you continue to believe. Once you begin to view and think of yourself in a different way, this is when you will start to see different types of people, positive results, and great outcomes in your life. Make it a habit to confirm positive qualities about yourself, say them out loud, and you can even add this in with your morning stretching routine every day. The things that you genuinely believe about yourself can actually predict a positive outcome for you and your future. It just takes consistency in taking the necessary steps in order to achieve your goal. The way you think to look at yourself and how much you believe that you can actually achieve something will definitely have an impact on your ability to succeed. Most of the time, you will be the only one who believes in yourself, because no one else will. Many times, others might try to stop or deter you from going after whatever it is that you want. You may begin to see that certain people do not want you to make it because they believe that you will never amount to anything themselves. Make it a point to be that self-fulfilling type of person. Continue to predict great things for yourself, your life, and your family, which will be a powerful tool to have. This is where you really need to have confidence in yourself as well as your ability to achieve your goals. This is going to be that thing that you hold on to when things get difficult for you. The ability to increase your self-belief and create more and more positive images to place into your mind and spirit is going to get stronger and stronger. Mastering your emotions. Feeling each emotion. As a child, you probably were told not to show or express emotions many times we were taught that this was not acceptable behavior and would usually suffer consequences by showing these feelings. We want to erase those lessons and acknowledge the fact that emotions are natural and so are the reactions that we have to them. You need to give yourself permission to delete all of that information from your childhood so that you can reframe and adjust your mind. The first step is always to be aware and allow yourself to feel the emotion. The key is to learn to control your reactions to the emotions that you are having at that moment. Just remember to identify exactly what you are feeling, which will slowly take power away from the emotion and allow you time to process what you are feeling. This helps in terms of being in control of the way that you react to difficult or stressful situations. Do not try to control your emotions. The most important part of processing difficult emotions is to stop trying to control them, but acknowledge them and feel them at that moment. You cannot control your emotions, but you can master them and learn how to control your reactions and responses to them. When you are aware of the fact that you have something that you need to do, this does not mean that you will actually do it, especially if something stressful happens in your life this can override your best intentions. When you are trying to make a permanent change in your own behavior, one of the first lessons that you need to learn is how to deal with and control that immediate, unexpected pressure and stress. This will ensure that you are able to remain emotionally aware and calm. Self-compassion. You have to be able to forgive yourself and be compassionate with yourself when you make a mistake or do something that was wrong. Everyone makes mistakes. We are just going to have to be patient and concentrate on what is positive about whatever the mishap was. It is not healthy for you to judge yourself too harshly, beat yourself down, or lose faith in yourself because there is always a brighter side to things. When you are good at showing self-compassion, it becomes natural for you to be compassionate towards other people in the world. When you are too hard on yourself, it can be very damaging to your spirit, self-esteem, and your confidence, which will cause you to develop a harder exterior. Mindfulness Mindfulness is the practice of actively and purposely focusing your mind on what is taking place at the present moment, seeing it for exactly what it is, 
and not reacting emotionally out of control. The act of being mindful will assist you in shifting your attention to something positive or something that is not so bad about the situation. Having the ability to be the one who is calm and focused will also strengthen your self-awareness because you become more confident in your ability to handle difficult situations each time you experience something. If you are overwhelmed by stress, anger, and sadness, you are not going to be able to think clearly or make a healthy and rational decision. There are so many people dealing with everyday life and relationships which are not able to make clear and healthy decisions due to the fact that they are aware what they need to do to control their emotional reactions. You should be mindful and aware of the way that your past experiences affect your actions today, knowing this can help you deal with people in a more constructive way. You need to schedule a time to hang out with friends and family. If you do not get to do this much, you need to make time for this. Being mindful will bring awareness to the painful emotions that force you to become self-judgmental and self-criticizing, which is the best time to remind yourself that you need self-compassion. This can help to break you out of that self-destructive cycle of telling yourself negative and hurtful things about yourself. If you are mindful of these things, you will keep yourself change your thinking so that you will not allow those negative thoughts and they repeat themselves over and over. This can lead to a long road of depression, anxiety, and insecurity, which usually will lead to a lifetime habit of telling yourself those negative things. Mindfulness is also the key to living in the present moment, which is you forcing yourself to focus on that moment in time. It takes some practice, but just like any form of exercise, over time, it will become easier and will not feel like work at all, it will feel natural for you. When you get together with people you care about and share a few laughs, memories and even goals, this can refresh you and get your mind back on the right track. It is always a good idea to have your support system in place so that you can turn to them in times of need and make sure that you are always available to help them whenever you can. Do not fall into the habit of thinking that you can handle everything by yourself. This is not healthy and it also promotes isolation, so get help when you need to. Make sure there is someone that you feel that you can trust and who you feel comfortable with. This will make it easier for you to actually go to them for assistance when you need it. Being mindful is bringing your awareness and attention to the present moment and accepting how you may be feeling at that moment. This can assist us in decreasing stress. It is also a key to being a better leader. If you can change your mindset, your behavior and your employees and partners will follow. The act of being mindful allows us to distinguish between the things that we can change and the things that we are not able to change. An individual can be aware that if something heavy falls on their foot, they are able to remove it, but cannot change the pain that it caused them. You may not be able to change what happened at that moment, but accept it and make a decision on how to handle it. This may not even temporarily ease the pain, but the fact that they are aware that they cannot change it is a part of being mindful. Relationship Management Working well with others usually begins with having emotional awareness and having the ability to recognize and understand what others may be going through or how they are feeling at that moment. In order to be effective in managing relationships, you need to be able to handle yourself in difficult situations and have the ability to understand and be compassionate when someone has hurt you. This is not an easy thing to do, but it comes with emotional maturity which is necessary in order to find peace in many situations. When you become emotionally aware, you will be able to effectively develop additional social skills, which will enhance all of your relationships, making them more effective and fulfilling. When you have a good idea of how to manage your stress, this will be important in terms of gaining or improving your emotional intelligence. Your ability to manage your emotions will depend on the things that you endured in the early part of your life. If you were loved, nurtured, cared for, and protected, 
then you will most likely be more stable and feel as you are worthy and have value. For those who were neglected and or abused during infancy and throughout their childhood, they are the ones who consistently display negative emotions. Many times, when an individual has been raised in a somewhat normal home during their childhood, they will be better at handling themselves in difficult situations as opposed to someone who has had a life full of abuse, they explode quicker. When you have the ability to control those sudden impulses, urges, and strong temptations, it builds up the strength that helps you manage your emotions. Stay independent in relationships. Do not allow yourself to be dependent on anyone else for your basic needs. This is unhealthy and it will eventually cause you many problems and damage your self-esteem and your confidence. You need to be aware of who you are so that you are not in danger of becoming emotionally insecure. This will ensure that you do not consistently depend on others for our basic needs. Not everyone is a nice person who is willing to do things to help others. Many people have an agenda. Be mindful that codependency can become addicting, so be careful when starting to date someone new. Pay attention to the things that you allow them to do for you. It can even be cute and make you feel special to allow yourself to depend on a new partner especially if we are normally independent, organized, and self-sufficient. It can make you feel as if you are letting go and being somewhat free, but if you are not mindful and aware, you may be dealing with a dominant and controlling personality. They will not see things the same way that you do. They are probably keeping tabs on everything they have done and will soon be expecting something in return. This person may not be willing to turn off what they see as their control over you because they feel it is their right to do whatever they see fit. When you decide that you have had enough of what may be a game to you, they are going to take it as a personal attack because their ego is in full effect. This is why I say not to even get yourself caught up into allowing yourself to be taken care of unless you are aware and ready to deal with all that may come with that. Many people feel that if they take care of you, they have the right to have to say over your life. They think that they control you and will consistently tell you what to do and how to live. When one person depends on the other too much in the relationship, things are going to crash and burn, which is going to eventually destroy the love and it will become unhealthy and toxic. Power of choice learn to defeat those different fears using the courage that you have inside of yourself. Be aware that you are able to accomplish anything that you put your mind to. When you remain focused, work hard, and persist, you will eventually see a positive outcome. When you face your fears, you will automatically become open to trying new things, which will make you more self-aware as well as confident. This is one of the best ways to build up your confidence, is using your courage to defeat fears and is open to welcome new challenges and ways of thinking. When you allow yourself to exist in a boring life, going through the same routines every day, this will result in your growth being paused. If you keep doing the same things, then you will never be able to experience anything different, so welcome change and keep an open mind. You also need to take responsibility for the choices that you make, even when you choose not to take action this is still a choice. Be mindful of the type of choices that you have been making and figure out if they are working in harmony with your goals, your well-being, and your future. When you make it a habit of choosing things that are imperative to your success and achieving your goals, you will feel more like you are in charge and the happier you will be. You can choose to look at every negative situation and find the positive or find a lesson or a hint of something that you can use to get better, there is always something brighter to see in a dark situation. You just have to make a choice to look for the light in each situation. If you get rejected by someone, this can actually boost your creative ability since you were forced to come up with new and original ideas. Many people who are successful have similar stories about rejection. They usually say that they hurt in oh hundreds of times, before finally getting that yes. 
If you look at those rejections in the correct perspective, you will find something that you can correct, make all over and create something even better than you had before. Most of the time, when a door closes on you, 10 more have already opened up and are waiting for you to walk through them. This is why you can never give up on your dreams, continue to work, and realize that nothing good comes easy or overnight. All of those things that you are waiting for, they are waiting for you to show up and claim them, so keep dreaming and working. Any times people will criticize you out of jealousy, being empty and miserable in the inside, or simply because they just do not want to see you do well. This is all okay, it is just a part of moving through life, so accept all of it with a smile, find what you can learn from it and keep moving. Do not allow it to get you off track, stay focused, and be mindful that there will always be someone coming at you with negativity or some form of criticism. Trying to avoid it will not do you any good, this will only serve as a distraction and can eventually prevent you from doing what you need to do. Be mindful of the way that you are spending your hard-earned money, educate yourself on some good investment options, nurture your spirit and purchase the kind of things that make you happy and feel good. Spend more of your precious time taking exciting, memorable vacations, eat more at your favorite restaurant, and take the time to go and hear as much live music as you can. We need to be mindful of the power that we have to make any choice that we want to, because life is all about making choices, and we can structure our lives with the ones that we make. Many times, people would rather focus on blaming their circumstances on someone else, rather than just admit they are responsible for the current life that they are living. Choose to operate as an effective, compassionate individual Believe that you are capable of making good choices and display the ability to control certain outcomes in your life. When you choose to live this type of lifestyle, you will look for reasons to be happy and satisfied with life instead of dwelling on all of the negative things in life. Power in saying no. Many people do not realize this, but the word no is actually a complete sentence which says volumes all by itself, so there does not need to be anything to go with it if you do not feel the need. It is very strong and can be used to make a point, take a stand, or finally claim independence. Take a stand, make a promise to yourself to start doing those things that you really want to do, things that interest you and things that will serve as beneficial to your future goals and plans. Start learning how to please yourself and not everyone else. It is time for a change. In terms of changing the way you think, you are going to have to start exercising complete control, which will show others that the new you has arrived and is here to stay. Improving your ability to say now is going to depend on your attitude, your determination, and the habits that you currently have. You are going to need to recognize that this new habit of saying you know will only help you to get where you are going. Remember, other people are not the only ones that you will need to have the courage to say no to. That person in the mirror is the one that you will have to fight the most. Just remember not to mistake those things that feel good to you for what is best for your health and your life overall. This will take much self-control and discipline Telling yourself no when you have the urge or become tempted to do something that is not good for you. All you have to do is to make that choice to change your attitude and you will begin to see that most of the things in your life will begin to change automatically. To work on becoming this type of individual, the first thing you can work on is to look for evidence that life is good each time something goes bad for you. Every time misfortune comes into your life, all you have to do is think of and focus on something that you really love. This will occupy your mind until the bad feelings pass. You will also learn to deal with confusion and other things in a very different way when you live your life in an effective, mindful way. You have the inability to make sense of what is actually going on and look at the situation from a totally different perspective. You are your choices. Be aware of your physical and your mental health, 
This is vital to living a healthy life and being emotionally intelligent. You need to pay close attention and place extreme care into everything we allow into our minds, our body as well as our spirit. Anything that you are exposed to will have some kind of impact on your well-being, so pay attention to what type of environments and situations that you in. You have to make sure that those around you understand that your privacy is to be respected and nothing less will be tolerated. Remember, you are going to need to remind the person in the mirror this as well because they are the ones who will challenge you the most. At this point, you should only be in relationships that are healthy and where that person is encouraging you to grow within the relationship and outside of the relationship. Remember, choices, choices and more choices. You need to get in the habit of living your truth, speaking up for yourself and never denying your feelings again, even when it seems to make others feel bad. You should be taking care of you first. So being selfish in terms of letting go of your emotions and learning how to master them is totally fine. If you have children, remember that they learn by example, so please make sure that you are laying down the correct blueprint for them. Do not be one of those hypocrites who tells their daughter not to let a man abuse them while you force her to witness you, allowing the man in your life to beat up on you. This same thing applies if you have a son if you tell him not to hit on any woman, but he watched his father abuse you for years, he is going to apply what he has seen. You must lead by example, show them what is truly right and wrong, what is acceptable behavior as human beings so that they have a chance to grow up and become a decent person. If you are in a toxic relationship with a partner who is abusive to you in front of your children, you need to remove yourself and your children from that toxic environment immediately. Negative Emotions Many people go through life, allowing their pain from the past to define them, determine their future, and actually take away their chances of living an effective life. When you have trouble getting over all of those horrible names you were called as a kid, you keep hearing those hurtful comments whenever you meet new people. This holds you in your own emotional prison of negativity, which ensures that you continue to dwell only on negative events, thoughts, and feelings. When you continue to holding on to those negative memories, it can definitely lead to mental health issues because you will continue to experience all of those negative emotions. You have to learn how to replace the negative thoughts with positive ones. This will take some time, but like everything else, if you are consistent, it will become easier for you to do. You should not get into the habit of thinking of something that made you miserable and allow it to remain in your spirit. When it enters into your mind, allow yourself to feel the emotion for a moment. Do not get stuck there. Remind yourself that you have made it through those times. Once you make a consistent effort to practice doing this, you will begin to talk yourself out of reacting negatively or harshly to many situations as well as other people. Feelings and Actions You need to be mindful of the fact that there is a difference between having a thought and experiencing a feeling which may cause you to take action. Everyone has had some kind of horrible thoughts. This is normal. The key is to recognize that it does not mean that taking action is required. We have all had thoughts that are not that positive or beautiful, but we do not normally act on these thoughts in any kind of way. Many times, this is just a way for our brains to allow us to feel as we are getting quick revenge on someone who may have hurt us. We will always replace those negative thoughts and return to normal thinking where we are not imagining something bad or planning negative actions. Many times it can be difficult to control certain impulses because we do have emotions, but there is a difference between having a feeling and performing an action. When we are sad, this is only a feeling, but when you become withdrawn, this is an action, so usually one leads to the other. When we are angry, the aggression you display is a behavior, which is an action. There is a huge difference between yelling and screaming at someone when you are angry 
than if you were to tell them in an assertive way how you feel and the fact that it is bothering you. Having the ability to be aware of your feelings and owning the fact that you could possibly have extreme rage towards someone you love helps because now it does not control you. It is all about being mindful and making the right choices when you start to find yourself in that rage again. Having that self-awareness will enable you to know when it is time for you to take a step back, breathe, and get your mind together. Speak on it. Let it be known how you feel. It is okay to say it loud and clear, especially if you have not been the type of person to speak your mind. This is a great way to start expressing your feelings. When you actually speak something out loud, not only does it put that out into the universe, it allows you to release all of that aggression that comes with not speaking your mind. You do not have to be rude, disrespectful, cocky, but let it out and it will only do you good in the long run, so let it out. When we learn to be mindful of negative emotions, control our reactions and responses, it helps us to become more resilient. We are not necessarily born with the natural ability to sit through our emotions, but we are taught how to ignore and hide them from caretakers and our parents. Speaking on your emotions will help to release and free you from feeling as if you are a prisoner to your own past and allow you to live for the future. Denial is not healthy. Being mindful, open, honest, and willing to look at and accept whatever your reality is and be okay with it. Your situation or past experiences do not define who you are at the present moment or who you are going to become. You are not your struggles or your heartbreak. You are who you say that you are going to be, so make it sound good. Our past experiences do have some influence on how we think, who we grow into, and how we live, but you can change the course of your life if you choose to do so. Whatever you do, stay away from denial. Do not try to act as if something never happened. This will only cause you more harm. Thinking in that way will keep you from being able to open up and start a new thought process and learn different perspectives. You have to learn to face your pain without allowing it to control you because you have the power to change those inner thoughts. Do not fall into the habit of minimizing your pain and be careful not to get addicted to self-medicating and other unhealthy types of behavior. Positive Replacements When you have a horrible memory or a negative thought, you do not have to be held prisoner to those thoughts. You can choose to replace them with positive memories. This way, you are able to spend more time remembering those things instead of the things that make you feel angry or sad. Positive thinking is not about tricking yourself. It is more about changing your outlook to a different side of reality. You have the ability to reframe any situation and see the positive in what others may believe there is only negative. It can take a while to get used to the idea of being able to replace those negative thoughts but it can be done with consistent practice and being determined to do so. If you can train your mind not to dwell for too long on negative thoughts about something in the past, which involves telling yourself that there are too many good things coming up to focus on that. Many times, if you just take the time to appreciate the small things that mean so much in your life, this will assist you in shifting those terrible thoughts into some kind of motivation to have a great day. Trying to exist in a positive manner basically consists of looking for some good in every bad situation or environment. If you can master this skill, you will go a long way and it will definitely get you through some really tough times in your life. Empathy Being empathetic means you have the ability that is needed to recognize, understand, share, and actually care about how someone else is feeling. This is very important for all of our relationships because we all want to feel as if we are loved, respected, and needed. People are conditioned to notice if you truly care about what they are saying and what they may be going through, and you can show this by listening to each word and making sure that you try to understand what they are saying. 
Show that you are active in the conversation by using your body language, making sure to have direct eye contact, and remember to ask questions as well as respond to them. Adjusting the tone of voice as the conversation changes show that you are interested in and listening to what is being said. When you are truly empathetic, people are able to feel that, so just be genuine, compassionate, and understanding. Love is a choice. Some of the old school traditions suggest that love is a thing that happens to us because we are unable to control ourselves, which can be somewhat true, but making the choice to stay with someone and continue a relationship is yours and yours alone. This may not be as romantic as some people want it to be, but in reality, the key to being happy is having self-love, self-awareness, and choosing to continue loving your partner, once again making the choice to continue to fight for the love that you have within your relationship. True love can sometimes be a matter of destiny, but making a decision to work hard to keep the relationship going is not, it involves making a choice and sticking with it. When you continue to do what it takes to make things work, as time passes, you will notice that all of those weeks have now turned into years. Happiness in the relationship is something you have control over. Simply by choosing to communicate and be honest with your partner, this takes away many problems that exist for many. Taking the time to be mindful of what it really takes to be happy in a relationship is a major key along with controlling your own behavior. Nurture your loving relationships. Being blessed enough to make it to the final stages of life, it is not something that everyone gets to experience, so you want to make sure that you have people around who you love, trust, and care for to spend your last days with. At this point in life, money in your bank, the career you held down, or anything else that you may have accomplished will not matter to you at all, but having love and company will. Those who have been there to love you fill your heart with joy and making sure that you feel secure, safe, and satisfied are what is important. As we go through our life, trying to accomplish goals and fulfill our dreams, we get pretty busy which sometimes causes us to lose important time with those who we love. This can also result in us actually losing a few very important relationships because we are so focused on ourselves and our goals, we must be mindful and remember to find that balance. This way there is no chance at losing or hurting a very important, close, loving and healthy relationships with those who are vital to us when we reach the last chapter of our lives. No matter what you do, keep these relationships high priorities, focus on building, sustaining and keeping them healthy so they will be there in your final days. And you want to be there for those that you love as well. Being able to be that loving ear and heart to someone that you have cared for over the years does a great deal for the spirit. Admitting Fault Being able to admit when you have done something that was wrong shows a sign of emotional maturity and it is vital to maintaining any healthy relationship. If you are the type of person who constantly refuses to admit your wrongs, it is just going to show the people who are around you who you truly are, as well as paint you in deceptive light. The most effective way to handle it is to be honest, own whatever it is, apologize and move on. Without realizing it, this is another way that you are releasing stress from your body. Anytime that you hold something inside, keep secrets or live in a deceitful way, it can be very harmful to your health in the long run. Eventually, you are going to be the person that no one wants to be around, so they will only interact with you when they really need or have to. You are going to become consistently irritated with everything and everyone simply because you are not being honest with yourself or anyone else. It can indeed be very difficult, humiliating, or an even embarrassing when you need to make an admission of something you have done wrong, but it needs to get done, so just do it. If you take a moment to think about it, you will realize that there is no need to go around feeling like you fight to prove your point if you just admit what you have done. We are all wrong sometimes. 
If you are one of those people who always feel the need to write about something, you need a really quick wake-up call because that is not reality and it is also a way to stunt your learning process. First of all, you do not even realize how much pressure you are putting upon yourself because it is just not possible to be right in every situation or circumstance that you encounter. When you live your life putting that type of weight on your shoulders, you are putting a limit on how peaceful and healthy your life can actually be. Take a moment to decide if you would rather be right or if you would much rather be happy. The obvious choice should be happy, but if you are addicted to being stubborn, then this will not change. Active Listening Being an empathic listener can prove to be powerful and beneficial to you and the other person. This will enable you to be able to fully understand them, be involved in the conversation both emotionally and intellectually. Empathic listening means that you are listening with your eyes, ears, and heart while making sure to listen with no intention to reply, judge, convince, or manipulate the situation. They only need for you to listen, pay attention, care, and finally just to understand. Listening comes naturally to someone who is empathetic, but there are those who need to try and practice at being better listeners because many times we only listen halfway to the person who is talking to us unless they say something that is interesting or beneficial to us. When you actually take the time to become a better listener, it can be beneficial to both you and them. Being a good leader As leaders, we are inspiring others with a vision that we have based on our task at hand, so the more clear you are about your vision and your mission, the more authentic you will be in your delivery and the more people you will have that will feel a natural connection to your message. You can motivate others with your goals when you are constantly working on your goals, talking about your goals, and living in a life that pertains to your goals. It should show in everything that you do that you are on some sort of mission to accomplish a dream or goal that you want. One of the best ways to figure out how to be a better leader is to continue to come up with great ideas about how to assist others and improve the world. These are the things that we wish others would do, so just be what you would love for everyone else to be. When others notice that everything that you are connected to has to do with your goals and your dreams, you are automatically going to inspire and motivate others around you. They will say things like, Every time I see or talk to you, you say you are working towards a goal. These are the types of comments that you want to hear from people because they will keep you motivated and on the right track. Having perseverance, which is simply the ability to keep going no matter how long it takes or how hard it is, just keep working to achieve your goals and continue to be productive. You also need to have ambition, which is simply the desire to achieve your goal. In addition to your ambition, you need to be able to force yourself to put in that extra effort sometimes. Great leaders always have great social skills because most of the time they are excellent communicators who know how to get others motivated and ready to go. They are able to convince others to have a good day even if they cannot see one insight, they have the skills to find the good in every situation. Leaders who handle and carry themselves accordingly do not waste their effort on verbally attacking others, making decisions when they are angry, or passing judgment. Effective leaders always stand on their values and are very consistent in coming up with better ways to motivate and inspire others. A true leader stays ready to receive both good and bad news because they are able to manage their emotions. Having good social skills is also helpful when it comes to trying to manage and resolving conflicts between others. They are usually very quick thinkers with the ability to calm down a heated situation. They are not comfortable leaving things unresolved, and they always figure out a way to show others a way to get things accomplished. Leaders are very good at setting examples by their work ethic. When you see your boss working just as hard or even harder than you, it makes you want to work even harder. Most of the great leaders will never let their temper get the best of them. 
They will always keep it in control, no matter what the issue is at hand. The leader who is trusted by their entire staff remains easily accessible to all of them, always shows understanding and compassion. This is the one who will have the best team. In order to be an effective leader, one should have a solid understanding of how their actions affect the people around them and vice versa. Being able to truly relate to others, the higher the success rate will be, and that is not only financially, but I am also talking about success as an effective, loving human being. Those individuals who are truly self-aware have the ability to empathize with others, effectively communicate and read the cues of people are considered to be successful in my book. Praise and motivate your team. As a leader, when you take the time to show others that you not only notice their work but appreciate and love it, this can make a huge difference in the way that those who you are leading will respond to you. Not only will they feel that you truly appreciate them, but they will also be inspired and motivated to keep working to get better at whatever it is that they are doing. When you feel good about yourself and make sure that you are taking good care of yourself, it comes naturally for you to have a love for others. You automatically nurture and inspire others without having to think about it or work on it. A really good leader has the ability to make others feel like the project that they are working on is actually worth all of the sweat. When you are a leader, make sure that your light is shining at all times. People should look at you and just smell inspiration, love, motivation, and compassion. Being a leader means that you are living in your truth, walking in your purpose, and helping others to do the same. Many times in life, we tend to keep our deepest desires from most of those that we know and love, which does not seem to make much sense. There is one thing that you have dreamed of and fantasized about for years, but you have never told anyone or expressed any interest in the subject at all. When you have that type of strong desire, do not allow yourself to place it on the back burner for now. Get up and go for what you want in life. Do not listen to those negative voices that tell you not to go for it or that you will not be able to attain a certain thing. Trust yourself. Take some time to figure out what has been keeping you from making that first move in order for you to make this a reality. Many times, especially as leaders, we do not have the appropriate time to focus on our own dreams and desires because we are usually helping others to stay motivated to achieve their goals. It is imperative that you learn to find that balance. Helping others is great, but do not lose yourself in the process. Live your truth and shine. Being a leader, you need to realize that no one ever died taking a moment to focus on themselves. You have got to reflect and make time for some extreme self-care. You will be the one who reminds everyone that mistakes and failures are only lessons which show us what road not to travel down the next time we attempt something. Inspire your team not to decrease opportunities and to embrace the feelings of joy, which comes from using our own unique talents, gifts, and skills. Letting your light shine will be confirmed to those who already look to you for inspiration because this will assure them that they have made the correct decision to follow you. God meant for each of us to walk within our purpose. He also gave all of us a form of creativity, which some of us just have not managed to tap into yet. From the time we are children, we are surrounded by an invisible structure, referred to as culture or environment, which is where we get our ideas on how to navigate through life and the world. If someone grows up in a structure of the personality which is focused on strength and weakness, that is the only way that they will be able to view the people that they come into contact with. When they come into contact with a homeless person who may be asking for change, they immediately think that person is a loser, which many times they actually express out loud. One of the most common statements that rude people say to homeless people is, get a job. I have heard that hundreds of times as if that person really chooses to live that way. 
The next second person in this example grew up in a structure where the focus was needy and the fortunate. This is the only way that they view everyone they meet. When they interact with someone who is homeless, they will give that person money, show them compassion and understanding as well as with the best for them. Many times, following the interaction with that person, they will continue to feel bad while asking themselves how we, as a society, can fail so many people. These individuals actually spend a lot of their time thinking about the well-being of others, which causes them to spend a good part of their lives helping the less fortunate. The bottom line is, you have no idea what led someone to the point where they live and sleeping on the streets, so judging them is pointless if you do not want to help them, just move on. We only know what we were exposed to and taught until we actually go out and learn things on our own, experience the world, and begin to develop our own perspectives and beliefs, we are socially immature. This is why it's so important to become self-aware, do your research about things, read books, educate yourself so that you can come to your own sensible conclusion about life. This needs to happen without the influence or opinions of anyone else. For each of these individuals, their emotions are the tools that they use to interact with others. The first one uses anger and aggression all of the time because he believes that makes him seem strong. The second one seems to use understanding and compassion as their main tool, which allows them to be a giving type of person. It is all about the way each person perceives the world and how they need to move around in it the angry one will always try to prove his strength, while the compassionate one will consistently be looking to help those who are less fortunate. The master of emotions is someone who can destroy that invisible structure around them and develop a diverse set of ideas and perspectives, which will help them to look at the same scenario in different ways. This type of person would be a mixture of the two above, which would allow switching from one to the other. Taking a moment to try and see all of the potential realities that may exist, looking at a homeless man and realizing that he may be out there due to lack of support or failure of the system. He may actually not be on drugs, worthless or lazy. He could really be down on his luck, with no one to help him out. Learn to be mindful, take a moment to think before you look down on someone, you have no idea of the road that they are traveling. Being a master, you will automatically come up with new ways to view things and interact with people. This is because you always take a moment to listen, show compassion, and help anyone that you can. Just by listening, you have now given yourself a new way of perceiving what is in front of you, allowing you to develop a new layer of understanding even when you do not agree with the point of view. When you are open to new ideas and perspectives, this is a great way to be consistent in working on the skill of mastering your emotions. When you are able to truly see things in a different way than you ever have, you will gain a clear and true understanding of the way that the world works. Lead by example. You are supposed to be that motivation or inspiration for someone your team because most people do not welcome change so you will have to be the image of welcoming changes and new things. We expect leaders to know exactly what to do and how to motivate to get them going. We all need to learn to place ourselves in the role of a leader at one time or another in life. You should consistently be willing to appear in the way you expect your team and others to look. Forgiveness When you can find it in your heart to forgive someone, just remember that it really for you in the long run because you will be taking your power back from them. When someone hurts you, they automatically take power over you because what they have done has taken control of your emotions. You need to forgive them so that you can learn to manage the reactions that you are having to all of those negative emotions. After you finally find yourself in a place where you feel that you are ready to truly forgive, this is when you should continue your contact with this person and not a minute before. You should have already taken the time to figure out if you are ready to forgive that person entirely and completely. 
This is something that you need to do before you make that decision to interact with them in any way. You must be willing to let go of the past, make an honest effort not to bring up old situations during future disagreements. This will show that you are truly moving forward, which can be very difficult, so be honest with yourself about when you are ready for this. Telling someone that you forgive them is easier said than done because you are going to have to be able to show that with your actions. You can say that, but if you are showing them that you are out for revenge, still angry or hurting, there is going to be conflict. They are going to feel that you are not over what they have done. This is the reason you need to wait until you are ready to forgive them completely. You cannot halfway forgive someone if you are going to forgive you must dig deep and find something inside of yourself that will help you move forward. Like I stated earlier, none of this is easy, but if you are determined to make things work out, it is well worth all of the hard work and effort. Trying to figure out how to completely forgive and really mean it can be more challenging than most people realize because you have to be in the presence of someone who hurt you, which is not easy to do. In the end, you will be the one to benefit from forgiveness because it will allow you to feel free. Basically, you will not be holding on to those negative emotions and feelings that caused you to feel that way in the first place. Anger and resentment, which also cause stress, are very damaging to your health as well as cause you to have a negative effect on others even when you do not realize it. So when you learn to truly and deeply forgive, you actually take another step towards freeing your soul. Your way only. This is the type of thinking that will destroy relationships, tear down trust, and allows your ego to interfere with controlling the narrative of what is taking place. It actually makes you believe that your ideas, thoughts, and values are better than anyone else that you know and how you are pretty much superior to others. Thinking this way can actually harm you because without you realizing it, you can become addicted to behaving in this manner and permanently live with that reality. When you think this way, you're judgmental, your ego is out of control, and it causes you to be less approachable, which usually results in minimal conversations. You have convinced yourself that no one can do anything better than you while you do not even realize that you are not being a good team player at all. When you try to convince everyone else that you are a team player, they will laugh behind your back because your actions show them something totally different. If you are trying to become more empathetic towards others, you will need to change a few habits immediately because actions speak louder than words. Being defensive. If this is your consistent reaction when someone calls you out or asks a question that you do not like, then you need to take a long look at yourself. When you know that you have made a mistake or done something wrong, you need to own it instead of making excuses or placing the blame on other people. When you get into the habit of blaming others, it can be difficult to stop yourself because just like lying, it can become dangerous and very addictive. You should make it a point to work on yourself, take the time to self-reflect and learn to take responsibility for your actions instead of choosing to blame someone else. Body Language Being less aggressive when someone has upset you is all a part of being self-aware and having the ability to control your emotional responses. Try to be mindful of the way that you are presenting yourself and what you are saying through your body language. People can listen to your words, but if they are emotionally mature and intelligent, they will be able to read your nonverbal cues, so make sure that you are on point. Your body also speaks to you when it is in need of nutrition, proper rest, water, love, and attention, so you need to listen to what your body says. Your body will eventually scream really loud when you do not listen, so tune in and hear it when it is crying out for help or attention. This is the only way that you will be able to respond accordingly and live a healthier lifestyle. One of the things our body talks about is the way we are treating it and how it feels, 
Most of the time we do not listen until it is yelling uncontrollably that it is impossible for us to continue to ignore. Brush up on your listening skills so that you can hear what your body is saying to you when it begins to speak directly about the care, attention, and possibly specific healing that needs to take place. Get in harmony with your body and develop a close relationship with it so that it does not have to scream or cause a dramatic scene to get your attention anymore. Stereotyping You want to stay away from this because it can be a form of generalizing, which is used to put people into boxes, assume many things about them and their ideas. Many people have a difficult time getting past certain stereotypes because they have been made to believe that those are accurate descriptions of people out in this world. Take the time to get to know someone for who they are. This will provide way more information about them than those things that you spent time assuming were true. We have all been in a situation where someone has taken something out on us because of something someone else has done. This is not a good feeling. So just remember that before you do the same to another person. Imagine it was you. When you can exercise the ability to put yourself in the place or position of someone else and understand what they may be going through, it is a great way to just bring you back into the space of being human. Use this tool to help you deal with situations that are not that easy to deal with. It can also assist in increasing your understanding and your sensibility towards others. When you are mindful of your actions and practice this on a regular basis, you will be quicker to show compassion and understanding, which will keep you from rushing to judgment on others. This usually comes naturally for many of us when we hear something bad has happened to someone, we automatically begin to imagine what we would if we were in that situation. Once again, it can keep you from judging someone or something too quickly and give yourself time to think for a moment. Showing personal integrity. Personal integrity generates trust and shows people that they can indeed count on you keeping your word, commitments, and promises, and being honest is a large part of that. Integrity includes but goes beyond honesty. Having integrity also means that you treat everyone by the same set of principles and that will automatically improve the way people will come to trust you. They may not at first appreciate the honest confrontations that this level of integrity might generate, but they will respect it in the long run. Being confrontational can sometimes take a great deal of courage and many people would prefer to find an easier way than to deal directly with belittling and criticizing betrayal, and participating in ineffective and negative talk about each other. But when you are honest and open and kind to them, show them that you care enough to confront them, and eventually, this will build a loving and trusting relationship. Stress Management Stress Stress is the way that your body responds to something that it may perceive to be harmful to you. If there is a perceived threat, you will experience a chemical reaction that will activate an automatic defensive response. This is what helps to prevent you from getting sick or contracting a disease. When stress is left untreated, it can have effects on you physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. It may cause you to constantly feel tired, moody, and irritable, and you might actually begin to get headaches. It will definitely have a role in the way that your body reacts as well as how it speaks to those around you. Fear of the unknown, not being in control of their own lives, can cause someone an extreme amount of stress. These individuals usually live with constant anxiety due to the fact that they feel feeling like they are not the driver on the road that they are traveling. Stress has a very different effect on all of us there is not any specific way to define or describe it, nor has there ever been a perfect way to deal with it, just ways to manage it. One of the first steps you can take is to gain a sense of self-control, which will help you to remain focused on doing what is necessary to move forward in your life. When you consistently keep your mind on what needs to be done, what is important and what you need to do to get things accomplished, 
It helps to keep the stress levels very low. Make sure you set personal boundaries and limits, which you do not allow anyone to cross, even yourself. This is definite protection against daily stress. You do not want to be one of those individuals with stress levels that are so high that they are not able to function on a normal level in order to live a healthy life. When you are unable to manage your emotions, there is a good chance that you are probably not managing your stress either, which will eventually lead to serious health problems. When stress is left unmanaged or uncontrolled, it can raise up your blood pressure, slow down your immune system, and it will also increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes. Being under a constant amount of stress can make you look much older than you actually are because it will speed up the aging process. In order to begin to improve your emotional intelligence is making sure that you learn how to manage your emotions as well as your stress. If you constantly have emotions that are out of control and consistently feeling stressed out, this will also take a toll on your mental health, which will ensure that you are vulnerable to anxiety and depression. Share your story with others. A great way to release stress and built up shame or guilt is to just let it all out, talk about it with someone, and you will notice the weight that is lifted off of your shoulders. There is an old saying which goes, do not let those secrets live in your spirit. This is so true because without you realizing it, they will slowly kill you and all of your dreams. You are not doing any good to yourself or anyone else by holding on to all of those old secrets. Just let them go and watch how free you feel. Do not think about it. Just let it go. Do not get caught up in telling the story a certain way. Do not try to dress it up. Just tell the story so that it is not in your mind and heart anymore. Give it somewhere else to reside. This way, you are not responsible for taking care of it, allowing it to live rent-free within your body. It is time for it to move on. Not to mention, this can also help you to gain the trust of someone new because when you open up yourself and share some of your most intimate feelings with someone, they begin to feel safe with you. This just means to share some of your dreams, goals, fears, and a few other details showing that you can be trusted, which in turn, the other person will be comfortable sharing more of themselves, which will open up a deeper conversation. After that, it's all good now because you now have a new person that you can communicate with and practice being more empathetic without any judgment. Not only are you supporting your mind and body by releasing that toxic stress, but you are also working on your communication and social skills. Stretching and exercise. Make sure that you take a few moments each morning to get your blood flowing and get the energy up. It will improve your mood and attitude throughout your day. Taking the time to exercise, moving or playing around, dancing and being active, these are the kinds of things that we can all do. They are all natural and costs us nothing. Exercising is also known to increase physical, mental, and spiritual health and is an excellent way to combat stress. It is also a great way to restore your spirit, go outside and take advantage of the beautiful nature that is there for all of us to enjoy. Take a few moments to find something to be thankful for. If you are not really into exercising that much, you really want to make sure that you take 10 minutes every morning to do your stretches. This will help you to start your day off right, as well as get your blood flowing. Sleep and water. When people do not get enough sleep, they are usually stuck in their negative thinking, which always affects their ability to focus on positive things. So many times, they are very aggressive and disrespectful to others. They also tend to engage in the more negative type of conversations where they are making it a point to put someone else down or talk bad about something that someone else has done. Try to get at least six hours of solid sleep each night. I know that everyone says eight, but for many people, that is just not a reality, so get at least six hours of good rest. Your body will not only thank you for this rest, but it will also repay you with energy and overall good health. 
When you do not get enough sleep, it is very bad for your immune system, stress level, mood, and physical health. When you get the proper amount of sleep, your body is quicker to recover from injuries and illnesses, and it also helps to speed up the recovery process after surgery. There is something really simple that we all can do, which takes no extra energy or thinking. Just drink plenty of water and get a good amount of rest each night. If you are not into drinking water, it is a good idea to get it out of the way in the morning during your stretching and meditation. Make sure to drink at least one bottle per day, even if you claim to hate water. Learn to love what it can do for you and how natural it is. Release negative energy. The first thing you need to do is set up an environment where you can control the energy level as well as the outcome. This way, you can begin to build that road towards living a peaceful life. You should have a special space that you can go and get rid of any negative energy that you may have at that moment. A private room, a corner, or even your backyard will work. You just want to make sure that you are consistent with this, so that your mind will get used to doing it. This will automatically become a way that you relieve stress and release negative energy. Dancing, listening to music, and laughing can all help you to let go of negative thoughts and energy because you will be focused on what you are doing at the time. These activities will also refresh you and help you to begin looking at life with a new perspective. Meditation. Meditation can help to remove the stress while inserting positivity, relaxation, and peace into your life. You can use it to assist you in keeping all of your emotions in balance, as well as keeping allowing you to react to situations and people in a much calmer manner. The more you can quiet your fast-moving brain, the more you will be in tune with your emotions and the effects that they have on you. Meditation is always a great way to practice this. Just relax and try to keep your mind blank for as long as you can. You want to get yourself into the habit of meditating, which means that you need to schedule a time for it in your busy day. A good time is to get it out of the way in the morning, along with your stretches and prayers. Practice this a few times per day, sitting with yourself in a quiet space for five minutes. Continue this daily, and it will become a habit for you. From now on, every time you take your break at work, find a place that you can go and practice this. Once you get used to doing this, you not feel right without doing it will begin to become a necessity for you. There are many different types and levels of meditation, so you do not have to become an expert or stress trying to figure out how to do it correctly. Just take the time to focus on relaxing and really deep breathing. This is a great way to get your mind trained on what to think about. Be aware that there are many different types of ways that you can meditate, so you should find the kind that feels right for you, fits your lifestyle, and one that you actually like doing. You are getting ready to begin something that will last for the rest of your life because you have committed to improving your mind, body, and spirit. Read daily. Research has shown that reading and success are always connected. So, if you are someone who makes it a point to take the time to read on a regular basis, you probably have less stress than most of your friends. Increase your relaxation in order for you to sleep better at night. It will also ensure that you continue to expand your knowledge. The level at which you concentrate is going to become much deeper. You will gain better writing skills. And your confidence level will increase because you are constantly learning new facts. When you keep your brain active, constantly challenging and stimulating it, this can disrupt or possibly prevent the process of diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. When you are consistent in using your brain, you will ensure that it will not lose any of the power it has thanks to staying active. The brain is a muscle. And you should make sure to use it as much as you can in order to keep it strong. The same way you do workout sessions in order to keep your other muscles strong, take the same approach with your brain. I actually am into doing puzzles and mental quizzes to help keep my mind sharp. When you are a consistent reader, 
you are constantly learning new words, which makes your vocabulary even stronger, which enhances your ability to articulate well enough to navigate your way through a conversation with anyone. Pause. Taking a moment to slow down when you experience anger or other strong emotions is a great way to get your mind together and figure out why you have affected the way that you are. Keep in mind that whatever the situation is, you can always reframe your thinking and see it differently and make a rational decision as to how you are going to react to it. Sometimes, you just need to take a moment and appreciate yourself, thank yourself, give some extra love to yourself and praise all of the accomplishments that you have made. Make this a habit, taking a moment to pause and gather your thoughts. It is not always about being in negative situations. Sometimes, you just need to pause and restart. Schedule time to worry and stress. There are so many people in this world who just cannot seem to live without stressing or worrying about something. I believe it is another form of addiction. A person can read a thousand self-help books, go to hundreds of seminars, watch videos, but will not stop worrying because it is just their personality. That is okay. I have come up with a way to allow you to get all of that out in a healthy and interesting type of way, which means that you will schedule a time to worry from now on. This can be very effective for those individuals who will create something to worry about if they do not have something that is justified to them. We all know someone who has been told hundreds of not to worry, but they will continue in telling them that usually causes them more stress. When someone has an addiction to worrying, you can come up with ways to deal with that. It is all a part of living your truth. This is how you need to work this out. Schedule about 15 minutes every day and use this time to focus on everything that you need to or are currently worrying about, all of your problems, the issues of your friends, your job, finances, the children, and whatever else you can come up with to worry about. These 15 minutes are going to become very important to you as you will become used to doing this. So now you will find yourself regularly listing things to worry about during your scheduled time. The plan is to be able to tell yourself that now is not the time to think of whatever is causing you to worry. Remind yourself that you can get to that in the morning at the time that you already have set aside. This is something that you need to do every day even if you feel you do not have to, if you have a history of constant and chronic worrying, then this will help you out. It is all about forming a new habit and giving yourself as many tools as you can to assist you in changing your behavior. So make it imperative that you use this time so that you can worry every day. It may sound kind of funny or strange, but this is an effective tool. This has worked for many of those who just need to stress for no reason it gives them something specific to focus on as well. This should become an important part of your daily life. Schedule it the same way that you do your morning stretches, prayer, meditation, and exercise. During this time, you can actually have a list of things to remind yourself to worry about. This will probably turn out to be a really relaxing time for you, especially if you are one of those serious worry warts. Part of self-awareness is knowing who you are, so if you are the type to worry constantly, use that to your advantage and make it a scheduled part of your day. This way you are accepting who you are while being in control of how you act upon it. Once you get that out of the way, now you can get on with the rest of the day and whatever else that you need to do. You will not waste quality time sitting around worried about something that you probably have no immediate control over anyway. So now you can focus on your life and start living a more productive and effective lifestyle. It has never made any sense to me when people worry constantly, but as you go through life, you learn that there are certain people who actually feel the need to worry about something. If this is your personality, then you should be able to find something to worry about during your scheduled time, because most of the time you are already doing it anyway, you will create something to worry about if you do not see anything at the time. Now that you are going to schedule a time for it daily, this can be done without judgment or interruption, 
and you can literally sit and do nothing but worry about all those things in your mind or on your list. Trust me, those who are closest to you will appreciate this more than you do. It will give them a break from constantly having to listen to you going round and round about mostly nothing at all. Music When we listen to music, the part of our brain that controls actions, movement, and creativity is activated, which can make you feel really good as well as motivate you to finish what you may be working on. Dancing is a great way to relieve stress. You can also manage to sneak in a quick workout while you forget about the madness of your day for those few moments. Sometimes you might have to do something that makes you feel uneasy, nervous, and less than confident, and listening to an inspirational song makes you feel so good and so much more courageous. It will also lift up your mood and change your energy as those times when you feel down or you are not feeling inspired or motivated to do anything. Music has been known to assist people in getting through a task at work, during exercise, or while working. Turning on that music can shift the energy in the room and change the way that you are feeling. Schedule silly time. When you are engaged in doing something that you love to do, you really enjoy doing it, and you can have fun as well, you are going to be more creative and more productive as a result of those facts. Try to act as silly as you can. Think of the times in college or high school, even as far back as your childhood. Take a moment to tap into that innocence and immaturity and allow yourself to reside there for a while. Play your favorite board games, be spontaneous, do the things that you really love and enjoy. This will enable you to have a consistent smile on the inside and out. Laughing out loud, having true genuine fun, being extremely silly, all while exploring and learning new things, this is good for the soul and keeps you young as well. When you decide to have a great time whenever you get the chance, plan much laughter and it will greatly enhance your life, especially if you are sharing this time with somebody that you really love, like your closest friends and family. Have fun and laugh out loud. We all love to have a good laugh because it usually makes us all feel so good, and for that moment, nothing can take away that feeling overwhelming joy that you feel. Whoever that person is that you can get together and laugh uncontrollably with, Spend as much time with them as you can, every week if possible. Not only is laughter therapeutic, being around those you love, but trust can also help to lift up your spirit when you are laughing so hard that you feel like you may actually lose a gut or urinate on yourself. This is great to get rid of stress. Time Management Working to achieve better time management is a good thing to do, because when you make it a habit to be mindful of how you are using your time, the more you will accomplish, which will probably result in you producing a higher quality of work. Knowing what is important and having your values in place and living your life in direct harmony with the goals that you are trying to achieve will increase positive outcomes. Making sure to use your time wisely is essential to living an effective lifestyle as well as ensuring that you live in a more peaceful manner due to less stress. Behaving as if your time is extremely valuable and important will actually increase the level of importance and value that you feel about yourself as well. This will also improve self-esteem and confidence because when you know how your day is going to be spent, and exactly what you are going to do with each minute, you begin to feel very powerful and more in charge of the direction that your life is moving. The bottom line is, you have less stress when your time is managed in a specific manner because you pretty much know where each moment of your day is going to be spent. You have a certain amount of time to get things done, and when things do not fall into place, you are so organized and proactive that you already have a few backup plans in place. Many times, others will view you as cocky because you are always making moves that are certain to play a part in achieving your goals. When you stay focused, organized, and live your life based on what is important, people get intimidated by that, which causes them to perceive you in a negative way. Our time. 
We all need to be aware that we have control over where our time goes and how it is used. We only get 52 weeks in one year, so we need to make it a point to make the best use of this time and realize how precious it is. Many of us allow this important time to be taken up by things that are not at all important or have any real meaning to our well-being or our future. We really need to stop, take a moment, and be mindful of how much of our time we are spending on what truly matters to us and what we are doing to complete future goals. Think of the last time you really took the time to pay attention to where your time is being spent and how much you are wasting. You probably have not done anything like this in a long time, if at all. Now you are going to focus on the time that you spend caring for yourself, which I am sure that you realize very quickly that you never really do much at all, so it is time to start now. Prioritize what is most important. Put yourself at the top of the list and make sure that you remain there. That spot needs to be yours at all times because taking care of you is vital to you being able to help and take care of others. You now have an awareness of your power to change anything, so just make a decision and put your plan into action. Coming to the conclusion that your self-care, your health, your partner, and your family are all more important than anything else that you may have going on, which includes your career. Do not ever make your career or work more important than your family. This is not worth it. If you have been doing this, then you need to change this immediately. Prioritize. Learn to get your mind together. Sit down. Relax and focus on what is truly important in your life. Now is the time to prioritize the things in your world and start using the precious time in each day for the things that really matter the most. Come up with a list of things that are of vital importance, while also taking a moment to determine what items and people need to be cut off immediately. If you do this correctly, it should include a few of your bad habits and a few of those no good friends. You will notice that you do not need them once you reorganize your life and focus only on what is essential to you being able to live an effective life. This will definitely cut down on your stress because you are now only focused on the things that will be in harmony for your goals and dreams. Positive thoughts and energy should be the center of your attention while those negative thoughts are not lasting as long as they used to. Once again, you are now making a commitment to work on your mental well-being, relieving your stress, and only entertaining things that are going to improve your life. You will automatically feel less stress because of the empowerment you feel, which is because you have taken control of your life and now have self-confidence and self-esteem. Feeling sorry for yourself, living in those negative thoughts and emotions, is no longer an option for you because you are now proactive and optimistic. Release Shame In order for shame to manifest, it will need the assistance of secrecy, silence, and judgment, which we all know a little bit about. Most shame takes place because of an action that we have committed or something that we may have said, but you can overcome it if you just learn how to release it. Shame is just like depression, stress, and anger. They will destroy you if you do not get them in check by dealing with what caused you to experience these emotions in the first place. Do not let it reside within your spirit Tell it to those bags and get out of your life, because you are not holding on to any more secrets, so there is nowhere for shame to manifest inside of you anymore. The first thing you need to do is to think of someone that you feel you can trust so that you are able to share your story with them. If you do not have a close friend or family members that you have for support, then you can tell a stranger, it will be okay. The main focus here is for you to release all of that out of your system. This may seem a little strange, but when you are talking to someone that you do not know, you will most likely open up and tell them even more than you would tell someone that you know. You can also write a quick note or a long letter. This is another effective way to get those feelings and thoughts out of your mind and let go of that stress. If you are not into the whole journal thing, then you can try this each time you are having a difficult time with any emotion, 
Just take a moment to write down everything that you are thinking and feeling. Do not think. Try to edit or try to have it make sense. The point is to just get it all out, so it does not weigh you down anymore. In order to survive, the shame needs to keep that power going, so when you finally speak about your truth, whatever that may be, that shame has nowhere to exist and you will get rid of it forever. Just be mindful not to allow it to live comfortably within your spirit, which will happen if you continue to keep secrets or acting as if you are doing great when you are actually a total mess. Whatever you are dealing with, you need to find a way to talk about it in order to be able to truly move on with your life. One of the first ways that you can begin to push yourself into this new behavior is to dig deep inside, find that story that you swore you would never tell to anyone, then go and tell it as if it was a huge accomplishment in your life. Trust me, you will feel so free. The feeling of freedom, without any weight on your shoulders, is a feeling that you may become addicted to, which will cause you to start letting all of those secrets out. Motivation Staying Motivated In order to ensure that you continue to feel inspired and motivated, you need to have healthy and relevant habits in order to keep the focus on your goals that you plan to accomplish. Find creative ways to remind yourself of the things you need to do and the steps that you need to take every day in order to get what you want. This can help to make things just a little bit easier on you, as well as keep you motivated to take action the next day. If you are someone who believes that you are confident, but are just sitting around without taking any type of action, this is not really displaying any kind of confidence, it is actually showing the opposite. It does you no good to feel confident if you are not consistently taking steps towards achieving your goals. This is where true confidence and self-esteem comes from, working hard and being proud when something is accomplished. Sometimes, it can be pretty difficult to keep yourself motivated if you are going through a rough time in your life. This can cause you to want to take a break or just give up on what you are trying to do. You also have to try to remain disciplined enough to make sure you do what you have to do each and every day, so this can be a challenge, especially those days you feel extremely tired or stressed. Every one of us has taken a fall to the ground. It is all a matter of how you handle getting back up and making plans to move forward with your life. Each time we fall down or face a setback, this is actually a chance to learn a lesson and make sure that we never make that same mistake again. A great way to keep yourself inspired and motivated is to think back a few years ago to when you were working towards something, most likely. It is something that you have completed or accomplished, so you should congratulate yourself. This can serve as a reminder that you are committed to working hard and dedicated to finishing whatever it is that you start. Setting Goals When you set goals for yourself, make sure that they actually motivate and inspire you to want to accomplish and achieve them. You want to make sure that your goals are something that is important to you, something specific and relevant to the future that you have planned for yourself. When your goals are designed to work in harmony with what you are doing currently in your future, then you are more likely to work harder to achieve them. You want to be sure that you are committed as well as viewing your goals as urgent to ensure greater chances at having success. Give yourself a timeline to complete your goals so that there is always a specific date to get something achieved. This will keep you on track in terms of moving on to the next goal. I also suggest that you write your goals down, keep track of your progress, and reward yourself when you complete something. This will give you encouragement during those hard times when you feel like giving up, quitting or starting something new without finishing what you are currently working on. When you are writing goals down, be very clear and specific. This way you are not just writing words on paper to fill up the empty space. You are very serious and determined to complete each thing on that sheet. 
This is another reason you want to make sure that your goals are something that you truly love or desire because you are going to need that love for whatever it is to keep you going during the times when you are not inspired or motivated to keep going. If it is not something that you really love or want to do, then you will be more likely to give up when things are not going the way that you think they should be going. Make sure that it is something that you can actually achieve. Do not set a goal that you will have to go to Mars in order to get done. Be certain that you will actually be able to take the necessary steps that you need in order to complete it. Lastly, you want your goals to be directly related to the direction you want your life and career to go. This will make things go just a little smoother for you and you will develop the focus that you need in order to achieve your dreams. The last thing that you want to do is to waste your precious time on goals that do not mean anything to you or goals that do not matter if they get achieved in the long run. Making sure that your goals are important and relevant will make sure to help keep you motivated to finish what you have started and complete things. Since you are now working on your goals, dreams, and desires, you should be planning and preparing for your future. So the next step is to start making the necessary moves in order to complete and accomplish those things. Keep track, congratulate yourself, and give yourself praise for each small step that you take. This will continue to motivate you to keep going and working hard. Never give up. Backup plans. Being consistently resilient will ensure that you do not fall apart when things do not go as you plan for them to go. It will actually cause you to become even more optimistic because you really look forward to having to come up with an alternative. You will never give because you realistically anticipated that things could go wrong. So you already had plans B, C, D, E, and F ready to go. Be consistent with coming up with new plans and ideas because you will always be prepared and armed with an immediate response to things falling apart or going totally wrong. The key is to be consistent in terms of coming up with alternatives, new ideas, and make sure that you have at least three backup plans to your backup plan. There is always another way to go, even if it means setting aside that idea for a moment so that you can clear your mind for another step you need to take towards your goal. This ensures that you are always making important moves. Sticky Notes Place your goals on sticky notes and put where you can remind yourself daily of the things that you need to do. You can place them up on your walls, desk, computer monitor, bathroom mirror, refrigerator, and everywhere else in your house so that you will see them everywhere that you go. When you walk into your room and look at these goals each day, this will also act as a motivator and inspiration for you to keep going. Talents and Hobbies You should take the time to focus on the gift that you have, because God gave each of us a unique gift, so you need to work on it or tap into it. Whatever time you have, use it to love yourself and be thankful for the talent and skills that you have. You may have to remind yourself to be thankful and that there are many people who cannot do what you can do. Go to the mirror right now and tell that person to go and practice or get back to doing what they love or desire. It is a blessing to have dreams and goals, so make sure that you take the time to work on those things. This is where having a great support system in your life is a good idea because when you get down or lose interest in your skills and or talents, friends and family can be right there to help to get you back on track. Your passion. Now, we are going to touch on the subject of being passionate about something. Having a passion for something can be very helpful in terms of building up your self-esteem and your self-confidence. If there is something that you are interested in, waste no more time. You need to start doing whatever it is, immediately. Not tomorrow, or next week, but right now, you can at least make plans to take a step, or even if you just write down the goal, that is already one step you have made towards beginning to dive into your passion. If you do not have anything that you may be passionate about it already, then just take some time to become self-aware because we all have something in our hearts and minds that we really want to do or achieve. 
you may have to dig deep within yourself, especially if you are not mindful of your true inner self and what you really desire. When you truly begin to reflect, you will really think about what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you bored, as well as your dreams and imaginations. Once you get to know yourself, you will have a better understanding and you can begin work towards and go after things that are near and dear to your heart. Purpose God put all of us here for a reason and many people live their whole life and never discover what their purpose is. You have to want to find out what yours is. A common wish for many is that their purpose in life will line up or be similar to what their passion may be. This seems to be something that puzzles many people. Just because you love something or you may be extremely passionate about something does not mean that is your purpose on this earth. This can be very tricky and confusing to many because there are so many individuals who believe that these two are the same when they are not. If you are truly blessed, then they may actually be the like one another. This happens often, especially when someone is really spiritual. Many times when someone is working towards a goal, they may find that no matter how hard they work or what they do, it never seems to come together. Often this is because you may not be on the path that God has designed for you, so He will continue to destroy that path or guide you in another direction. Most of the time, we do not know that this is what is happening. We are just so focused on why we cannot do what it is that we want to do. This is a good reason to try and keep a close relationship with the Creator because your guardian angels are always there talking to you and trying to keep you on the right path. Quiet Place In creating a space to focus on inner peace, you are going to need plenty of room to think, relax, create, breathe, just be free, and imagine yourself floating. You need to be able to come home to a peaceful environment that fits into the new way that you are now living your life. Try to become a master at relaxing and re-energizing yourself at the same time. This is going to be what this special space is all about, focusing on you and your self-worth. As soon as you begin to do this, you are going to feel something different and beautiful in your spirit and you will develop a yearning for it. This is going to assist you in feeling better physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally because you have finally found a way to release everything that you have had pinned up inside of you. Now you are focused on your quiet time. Some like to meditate during this time and others just like to sit and truly try to clear their mind of everything. Just take a moment and connect deeply with yourself on a spiritual level. This will feel like you are cleansing each time that you do it. Reframe your thinking. We are not able to control which thoughts come into our minds, but we can replace the ones that cause us to have negative reactions to the emotions that are attached to those thoughts. Those are the ones that we can view from a different perspective, reframe the situation, and come to a healthier conclusion. As I stated before, this is a great skill to use. It can actually help you learn to be more mindful of the way that you think, as well as the way that you react to certain situations. Remember to take the time to practice reframing every situation that you are in. This way, you will train your brain to get used to doing this, and it will become natural for you. When you find yourself in a difficult circumstance, Take a moment and find something positive about what is going on. This is not easy to do at first, but when you are consistent, it becomes less difficult. Be open to change. You need to be open to embracing change. This way, you will not immediately reject new thoughts, ideas, or new ways of seeing and doing things. You should be open to the possibilities of finding alternative ways to achieve something because this will open up your mind and spirit for new things to come and reside. When you are set on a certain or routine way of doing things, you will never be encouraged to do things any other way because you have allowed yourself to become comfortable doing things the same way consistently. A welcome change at all times, as a matter of fact, 
you should go out and seek it instead of waiting for it, welcome it with open arms when you see it. You should be on a mission to do the total opposite of what you usually do. If you like for things to always be perfect, then you should choose something and make sure that you mess certain parts of it up intentionally. If you always do everything as planned and never go off of schedule, then you should try to have a whole day where nothing is planned. Just wing it. Go out of the house and have a great without thinking about it. This will help you to loosen up a bit and notice that life will not end if you do not do everything on schedule all of the time. Remember to be positive, proactive, creative, and optimistic when you are talking about your aspirations goals, or your dreams. In addition to walking with your head high, walking in confidence like we talked about, you have to remember to speak those positive words into your spirit. You need to change the way you speak about yourself as well as the way you think. We do want to continue with this practice of finding the courage for change in our lives because it is very important in becoming the new you. We want to constantly challenge ourselves to try new things scary things as well as unfamiliar things. If you have a need for order and predictability, then we are going to challenge that to the fullest. Doing things the same way week in and week out will keep you stuck on one wave and will keep you from being all that you were meant to be. You can learn quite a bit by choosing activities or hobbies that will give you a chance to learn something that may already exist inside of your spirit. Being proactive. This will involve making it a habit to look at where you focus your time and energy so that you are able to separate the things that have no specific importance and your mind on the work on what needs to be done. If you are wasting precious time doing something that is pretty much useless and doing you no good or not assisting in moving you forward, then let it go immediately. Do not use up important minutes of your day with things that you cannot control or things that are not in direct harmony or connection with the goals that you have set for yourself. Positive Outlook Positivity is a great way to make someone forget that they are having a bad day or that they may not be feeling too well. It can be so contagious, just like a smile, and it also can make a huge difference in the way that a person's day is going. It always warms the soul to use positivity to make others feel better and more optimistic. The more positive you are, the more you will make it a point to keep other positive people around you because positivity breeds positivity, which is a constant source of inspiration. It is not difficult to make others feel what you are feeling by projecting your emotions and what you are feeling at that moment. Make a decision today to be happy and once you do that, nothing else really matters because you actually already have everything you need from God to survive, so everything else is a bonus. Choose to be happy, which is a state of mind, and many people actually believe that happiness is simply having something to look forward to. We already have what we need to live a happy life, so we should stop and embrace your flaws, appreciate your shortcomings, Laugh at yourself and try to learn from your mishaps and mistakes. Find alternative ways to find the good in bad situations. This takes work, but just make it a habit and you will find yourself doing it all of the time. There is always positive or good in a situation. You just have to make it your mission to find it and express it to others. Positive thinking is not about fooling yourself. It is more about changing your outlook to a different perspective because it is good to know how to see things another way, reframing the situation and looking for something positive to focus on. Expect success. Why not expect miracles for ourselves, our lives, and our children? When you expect good things, something good is going to happen. This is a choice as well as showing our faith. Do not let your mind tell you that something negative is going to happen in order to stop your progress or mess up the steps that you are taking towards your dreams. When you wake up, decide what you are going to have a good day, no matter what comes your way, no matter who you encounter, you can decide to have a good day.
It is all about changing the way that you think and deciding what your day is going to be like. This is not to say that negative or unexpected things will not occur. This is your way of planning not to let anything or anyone keep you from doing what you have to do. When you start your day with the determination that you will move forward and get things accomplished, you will do just that, no matter what happens during your day. It will be as if your mind already had plans for mishaps or setbacks, so this is why you will not be completely thrown off by something unexpected happening. Oftentimes people will begin their day thinking that they are going to have a dad day. This is just the devil trying to see if you will allow him to claim your day. That is why I say just replace those thoughts with ones of your own. Take this time to say a quick prayer, gather your thoughts, and get your mind back on your goals, dreams, and desires. These are the things that you expect will make your life more meaningful and enhance your happiness. So take the time to spend thinking of more ways to get what you want and what you are working towards. Those positive thoughts and plans you have are your seeds. When you plant them, water them, take good care of them and nurture them, they are going to grow into success for you. Be sure to speak about and take actions that will bring you the things you want and believe that it is going to happen for you. Create We must make sure our inner peace is protected because our spiritual ancestors are constantly at work, putting us in environments and around people that represent who we were meant to be and what our true purpose is. Make sure that you are setting yourself up for success by being one of the positive thinkers on this planet which will cause you to receive a flow of positive and creative energy. A huge part of having peace in your life is making sure that you do not have toxic people around you and that you do not put yourself in situations where there is trouble or drama. Courage Being brave enough to face your fears is a good tool to use in your journey to increase your courage, which is one of the best things that you can do to improve your confidence is to stand up and look your fears in the face, then laugh real loud. Fear is not always your enemy. It can actually force you to face something that you have been trying to avoid. Even when things seem to be difficult or scary, you still need to stand up and face it. Just tap into your courage and be brave. This can only help you get through life. It does not mean that you are not afraid. It just means that you are not a prisoner of that fear. Stress is a part of life that we have to deal with. We just have to learn how to manage it and become experts at distressing ourselves in difficult situations. While displaying the courage for change, be mindful and reward yourself for the small accomplishments because you have a lot of hard work to see the changes manifest in your life. Trash Bin I want for you to make yourself what we will call a recycle bin, which will be a place that you will be able to throw the in your life in there when it is time. You can put notes and letters that you have written in order to get things off of your chest. This bin is going to be very important from here on out because this is where you are going to start dumping all of those negative thoughts and any other thoughts that may be negative. You are going to learn to enjoy doing this exercise. It is another one of those things that you may end up keeping and using forever. It feels so good being able to have a specific place that you can dump all of this negative crap into so that you can just do away with it. You may have written a small note to someone who has hurt you in the past. You can throw it in this bin so that you can get it off of your chest and out of your system. It is going to be there to serve as your emotional release and dumping ground. You may need to use this tactic until you can build up your courage and confidence in order to actually have an important conversation with someone. Write down the things that you plan to say or what you want to ask them. It can work really well while helping to build up your confidence, receive, and give back. When you catch a cold or virus, you are usually very careful not to give it to someone else or even worse. If we find out someone has given us cold at work. What I am referring to here is something that you want to catch and give on a consistent basis, which is love and positive vibes at all times. 
There are so many positive things that we can catch from others like inspiration, love, courage, motivation, work ethic. These are things that you can catch and then make an effort to pass them on to someone else. Whatever you have that may be uplifting, positive, loving, motivating, be mindful that you are holding on to something that could change the life of someone, so let it go. Get into the habit of being mindful enough to know when there is something that you may need to catch, as well when you need to and give back to someone else. Embrace the mystery. You are not supposed to know everything, or even how to figure out most things, so enjoy the ride and the mystery that life is. Have a good time while you figure things out and have fun learning new and adventurous things. Educate yourself by reading as many books as you can and welcome as many new facts that your mind can handle. Communicate with as many people as you can, especially with those people who have different views and backgrounds than you do. It is always a good idea to try and learn from those who are different from you and who grew up with other values than you and your family. The best thing you can do is just acknowledge and appreciate the depth of life and how much of a mystery it truly is, this is when you set out to find those answers. Remember to have a good time, be compassionate to others, enjoy life, embrace love and educate yourself while you are going through this exciting journey. Life is never what we expect, so embrace the puzzle and the mystery as you try to figure it all out. Inner Voice Guardian Angel we all have to get in the habit of listening to that beautiful inner voice that speaks to us constantly throughout our lives. It has continued to guide us, warn us, direct us, and telling us which way to go and which way not to go, but we always choose to listen to the voice that speaks the loudest. This loud voice is the one that encourages us to do the things that we should not be doing. It usually screams at us and encourages us to do or say negative or unhealthy things. Here is a great example. You have been trying to quit smoking and have been doing really well. Then you hear that loud voice telling you to go ahead and have a cigarette and how just having one is okay. It is only one. That will not make a difference. IT is not a big deal. Just do it. This is the type of message that you will always receive from that loud voice. It is only going to tell you to do things that are going to cause you harm, so be aware of this voice and do not listen to it. When your guardian angel, which is the soft and quiet voice, speaks to you, learn to listen, instead of getting defensive and thinking of everything that the loud negative loud voice has said to you. When you are mindful of the fact that both voices speak to you consistently, especially during decision making, you will be able to make better decisions simply by being mindful that there are two different voices speaking to us. Make it a habit to call on your guardian angels when you need assistance. They are there to help us anytime we need them and look forward to doing those extra things for us. This is just another power you have that you are probably not aware of but now you realize what is going on inside of your mind, so take advantage of it and use it. Both of these voices have been with us for our entire lives, and they will be with us until we leave this earth. The softer voice is constantly talking to us, guiding us and directing us with love and care, so we must learn to trust it more and tune out that loud voice when it starts screaming at us. The more you get used to finding that soft voice, listen to it and trust in it, that voice will eventually get louder and louder and that loud negative voice will get softer. Choose to become familiar with that quiet inner voice. When you finally understand it, learn how to use and follow it, the outcomes in your life will be more positive. Get into the win. When you speak about your plans and goals with direct intention, the outcome will usually reflect that. Get rid of words like if I or will I. Those words should not even be used in your vocabulary when you are discussing your goals and dreams. The only type of statements that you should be making the need to look similar to these when I accomplish my goals. 
When I spend quality time with my partner. When I get my new home. When I celebrate the success of my family. When I publish my next book. When I start my business. You can use this to turn a possible negative situation into something positive by being proactive and prepared. If you have an appointment at the doctor's office, you already know that you are going to be sitting there for at least three hours waiting to be seen. Since you already know how it is going to go, come prepared for that, take yourself a puzzle book, have some headphones so that you can listen to some relaxing music. The point is not to sit there upset and complaining, just sit, relax, and be okay with the wait. There is no need to get annoyed or upset, especially because you knew in advance that the wait is forever and you would most likely be there for most of the day. This is the reason that you took time off from work, so calm down and chill at the moment. Do not anticipate stress, anger, and being annoyed by saying things like, I am going to be pissed having to sit there for hours. What you should be saying is, when I get there I am going to work on some puzzles. When I get there I am going to eat some snacks. When I get there, I am going to listen to relaxing music while I wait. When they call my number I am going to be ready. When you take the time to reframe the situation, you will automatically program your mind to prepare for what is going to happen when you get there which can save you a tremendous amount of energy and just prepare yourself for a long wait. It takes a lot of energy to get upset, annoyed, so you should not waste that energy on something that you cannot do anything about. System and Process You should have a great system in place that is designed to ensure that you accomplish all of your goals and fulfill your dreams. Keep your mind on the process of the system that you have in place so that everything will work in harmony together in the end. The outcomes we have in our lives are usually mirrors of the habits we have and how we have lived our lives and conducted ourselves. Many people are great at talking that good talk, but let the time come when it is time to get to work and show some action, those same people go missing. The reality of it is that they do not have the work ethic or the motivation it takes to get the results that they want, but they still believe that they deserve to get what they want and what it is that they are looking for. When someone has a belief that they are overweight, then the focus should be on the way that they are eating and what causes them to behave this way. Wanting to have a bigger bank account means that you are going to need the discipline that it takes in order to consistently put money into that account. That account is a mirror reflection of the way that you are into spending your money. You may feel that you have control over your habits, but most of the time, habits are taking control of you. You need to reflect on your system that is in place, perfect it and allow it to do what you intended for it to do, keep you in check. When it comes to building and starting new habits, you should be clear and truly understand how the process works out and structure your habits in a way that you control them instead of being a victim of them. When you are serious about accomplishing a goal, it should be much easier to say no to the things that intrude on your life and delay our progress. An athlete who is in training will have to say no to all of his friends that are asking for them to hang out, being focused, determined and disciplined, will make it easier to say no. When you are consistent in making sure that priorities come first in your life, this will ensure success for you and your future. Winners and losers have the same goals, but there is always something that will be used to distinguish them. This is the type of system and process that they have in place in order to complete the goal. Example, when someone is living in a nasty house, they may clean it, but this has no real effect because they probably will never take the time to change the habits that cause their house to become nasty in the first place, so it will always be back in the same condition within a few days. Cleaning the house without addressing the real issue is not going to solve anything, so this will probably always be a nasty home. Developing and maintaining healthy and clean habits will ensure that your house will never again be nasty. Your identity and character are connected to your habits, 
So make it a point to ensure that behavior makes a statement for who you truly want to identify as being. Keep your word. I am a true believer that your word is really all that you have. So you need to make sure that you keep your word, honor your commitments, and always be as honest and sincere as you can. When you are the type of individual that is consistent in keeping their promises and doing what they said they would do, this makes others view you as someone that they can count on when you say you will be there for them. You want to be known as the type of person who is reliable and trustworthy, the one who will always come through if they say that they will. Many times, people will break their word, thinking that it is only something small, but to that other person, it was something that you said you would do, so to them, it is most likely something important. Just be mindful of your time, personal interest, and be honest with them. If you do not want to do something, just say no. It makes more sense to be honest and tell the person no than for you lie to them, with no intention of helping them, stringing them along, ditching phone calls and text messages, all when you could have just said no. For some of us, this type of behavior comes naturally, but there are others who actually find it easier to lie, pretend they are going to help, and just go missing on that person. This is not the way to go. First of all, you would not want anyone doing that to you, so just think of it that way. Some people are going to have to work on keeping their word and honoring commitments, which is okay, as long as you are mindful of the fact that you need to make a change and get better with doing so. A major key is not to make promises or commit yourself to something or someone that you know you will not be able to honor. Be honest with yourself and others when making plans. Honesty always works the best. If you are not able to do something, then make sure that you communicate that with the person who is requesting it. Do not say yes when you know you are never going to come through. If you are not a dishonest person, this is the type of behavior that makes you look exactly like that. So just be mindful of the things that you say that you will do for someone and make sure that you actually intend to follow through. You will enjoy many more great nights of sleep when you conduct your life in a manner where you show personal integrity are not dishonest, and keep your word. This will limit the amount of stress in your life. You will not be living your life constantly trying to figure out who you lied to that week, where you are supposed to be, how you can hide from this person, or how you can add to the lie you told last week to keep your cover. If you just operate with honesty and integrity, you will never have these type of questions annoying your spirit 24 hours a day, face it, when you run around lying constantly, you end up burning yourself out eventually. Conclusion Thank you for making it through to the end of Emotional Intelligence 2.0. I hope that you were able to find some information that will assist you going forward in your personal as well as your professional life. My goal was to make sure the book was simple, yet informative, and full of the tools you need to become emotionally intelligent. If you found this book useful in any way, I would really appreciate a review on Amazon. This is really helpful. We have four basic emotions which are happiness, sadness, fear, and anger. The bottom line is, you need to be able to identify and be mindful of each of these emotions as well as the way that you respond to having these emotions. If you have the ability to relate to other individuals, while knowing how to connect with your own emotions and remain calm, then you are emotionally intelligent. Research has shown that individuals who have emotional intelligence are usually in a better mental health state, their job performance is always at a higher level and they are known to be great at leading and inspiring other people. Taking the time to improve your emotional intelligence will not only enhance your social and communication skills, but it will also improve the way that you interact with other team members in the workplace. When it comes to being a leader, having the ability and personality which makes it natural to take control of a situation and change it for the better motivates and inspires others to want to follow you. The bottom line is that when you are able to manage your emotions, 
This assists you in becoming much stronger when it comes to having to stay calm in difficult situations or hostile environments. Just as emotional intelligence can have an effect on the lives of adults, it can also have effects on the characters and the lives of children as well. When children are exposed and taught to be aware of situations and people socially and emotionally, they grow into adults who are better able to cope with difficult emotions and are usually better at resolving conflicts. Their listening and communication skills are very effective and they are very good at solving their own problems as well as helping others with theirs. Others need to develop emotional maturity in order to understand empathize and work with other people if we do not, long-term success, true happiness, and healthy relations will not be a reality.